What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. He goes, feds came, took all the computers. Look, bro, you look at the door. There's this giant lock on the door. And I was just like, Another like, one. God. Like, so they were doing, like, fraud on appraisals and stuff like that, I guess? Bro, you go to a house in Newark. Yeah. That's decrepit. And you give it a $600,000 value. You're going to f jail. <laughs> this was literally now, in The Sopranos. You do that f 14,000 times. <laughs> you're going to f jail. <laughs> you know? I, like, so... the video of that shark ate that dude in egypt dude that was like oh my horrific God. man Whoa. and it seemed like no one was like i don't know just i guess help can never move fast enough but like then i'm googling like dude where because it wasn't i don't think the mediterranean that would happen it might have been it's the red sea side. yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah it was like down on that the red sea i guess is like kind of an inlet yeah in a way what's Damn. that connect to the Indian Ocean or something like that? Good Lord, man. That was just like, I've never seen... Like a real person die with a shark attack. Because any videos we've ever seen are right after it happens. It's that not like live. happened live. Dude, that guy must... That shark... He got bit a couple times and then the guy just came down on his neck and head and it was like, oh, oh dude. man. Dude, I wonder how long that shark was circling him. Oh, by the way, if your thing goes out, I just see. You. If it goes out, just go like this. It's not affecting the wow. audio. But I okay. wonder how long that f shark was circling him before it actually happened because there's no one else in the water. And for people who haven't seen this video, I will put not the video in the corner. I'll put it bl like blared out because we'll get demonetized. You have to look it up, Shark Attack Egypt. But like the girlfriend, he was what 50 60 meters out and then 20 he meters really from far. The, like that's yeah. i don't like that dude. dude i don't like that it was there was there's another angle of it too i don't know if you saw that but there was a woman from the other side of the dock who was like screaming to get swimmers out i i, I watched the video with no volume because i'm like dude, this is hard enough to watch i don't need to see some other person yelling screaming Ugh. Dude, so you didn't. Oh, dude, at the end when it, the short water comes up, it comes out and just bites him in the like, like the head and neck. Right at the end, that's when like he goes under. Dude, he was screaming for his dad because his dad was standing right there, on the so off the left of the screen. There's uh -huh. a dock, and his dad had to sit there watching this thing because oh. there's nothing to do. You can't you you can't do anything. It was you, like a tiger shark too, right? It's like a twelve foot tiger shark. That's like the, I mean, in, I don't know what's worse. Apparently, tigers are really bad. Bull sharks are really bad. Yep. Those are like the two worst. Um, yeah, they don't have a discerning. Mm. I know tigers don't have a discerning palate. So, like, they can't, they don't really like taste stuff. They can't tell if they don't like what they're biting into. And I think bull sharks are pretty similar. But either of those, that's always what you hear. It's very often a tiger or a bull shark. But there's a video of the shark shortly before this was like on i'll put it behind you on the screen i'll put i'll put this one in the corner because it's got no gore but if you look right behind you this is the shark about 10 minutes before it was on the it was on the shore and guys were like tiger 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 shark and then it swam over and i guess this guy was swimming with his girlfriend and it must have just been circling them because Everyone else got out of the water, and it, and he and he was pretty far out of the water, so he must have just been stuck there with this thing. And then someone saw it and was able to get a video. But that that was the worst. Like I was like sick to my stomach watching in that thing. I'm I'm good with the pool, man. I'm good, I'm good with the pool. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, on another note, I I actually when when we got connected by. The great Chaz Gotti last month, who unfortunately got in a car accident today, so he couldn't be here. He's going to be here with it us. It was a parking lot accident. We don't <laughs> want anyone thinking he was severely injured. It was some mom with a bunch of kids, probably getting yelled at by our kids. Chaz said that there was like six kids in the car. Yeah. She was driving fast in a parking lot. Um, I have two kids. Um, 
kids always lose it in the parking lot. I don't know what it is. And you just want to get the F out of there, man. You yeah. just want to get out of there. Yeah. So. Well, he, he got hit with six. He's all right. But we wish he could. He was going to be here in studio with us. But when he had connected us, I was looking up some of your stuff afterwards because I've been a big fan of your marketing oh. for a long time. The, people can see it on your shirt right now yeah. if you hold that up towards the camera. But you were you would just get billboards and digital billboards. Mm -hmm. I probably started seeing this five, six years ago. Yeah. Where it just pop up and it'd say, eat clean, bro. And you'd always be like, damn, like it was so simple and beautiful. But I saw that you, you started this after something entirely different than a shark going on with, with the ocean. But you were... You were from where Hurricane Sandy got hit yeah. like the hardest in New Jersey. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, actually, yeah, I guess so. I don't like. I guess I can't really say like hardest. Like, it's like if you lost your house and someone else lost their house. Like, it's like right. how do you compare with like? Yeah, it's all like, bad. Like yeah. this house is gone. <laughs> like uh, the whole street was gone. Um, you know, like I don't know in terms of like you know where I grew up was like low income, so. Um, but that, those are the people who never really get made whole, you know, like when a yes. low income area gets devastated, they're like, ah, like, like, you know, Point Pleasant, any, any like revenue generating town made whole immediately re renovated immediately. Everything's back to normal pretty quickly. Not to say they weren't that they were also very devastated, Sure, but they were made whole. Like my, my uncle, my grandma, they're all still displaced, dude. They're never building homes there again. And like, what town? Uh, Lawrence Harbor. It's an old bridge. Okay. No one's, you know, they're <laughs> who the, f who the f knows, but yeah, man, it was a horrible, um, yeah, man, I guess, I guess like that was the pressure cooker. That was, that was the moment the tank spilt over. Yeah. That was the, the rocket. So you, fuel. you just never, you, you saw that and you're like, well, I'm never going to let that happen to me. I don't, I don't want to be in a position where I'm at the mercy of people having to get rebuilt, yeah. whatever you want to build your own thing. Yeah, I was 26, and I remember being so depressed. I was so, um, just like as a man, you know, like I didn't feel like a man. Mm. Couldn't help my family, couldn't help my mom, couldn't help my grandma, couldn't help anybody. You know, I was living at my buddy, my buddy Paul's house at the time. He was letting me squat there. I was like a squatter <laughs> at my buddy Paul's house, and I was just so upset, you know, like it was such a horrible thing, like a natural disaster that occurred, and like I was unable to help like financially so like it was what were you doing at the time bartending no shit. i was a bartender yeah had you ever like cooked before was that like a thing yeah so i i used to cook i started so essentially man the prequel of e clean bro started in 2005 and um i was training for a bodybuilding show I was in really great shape and somebody asked me what I ate. I didn't think anything of it. I just, I just thought, um, yeah, I told him, I said, you know, I eat chicken, I eat sweet potatoes and broccoli. You know, <laughs> I was 19 years old. Yeah. Um, never thought I was going to be a business. I just, you know, what 19 year old, normal 19 year olds just don't like, there's not a lot going on upstairs, you know? Yeah. So he, he was like, can you make me some? And uh, I was thinking, I was like, well, you know, like in college, like people sell weed, so they get their weed for free, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was a bodybuilder and I was just thinking if I cook this guy's food, I can get my food for free. Mm. I wasn't thinking like capitalism. I wasn't thinking entrepreneur. I was thinking I'm, making, I'm making like 200 bucks a week, personal training, I, thing is i would train everybody for free i would never charge mm. jim the gym hated me but all i wanted to do was help people and i thought you know if i you know if i cook this guy's food i can get my food for free so i was like yeah man um i'll cook your food it's three dollars Th these were like 2005 prices right top round london broil was coming in at dollar 99 chicken breast was steady like probably 93 cents a pound those days were long gone yeah was, uh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> plus i was using frozen broccoli and you know so i i brought i brought his food there the next day and then later that day at the gym uh, you, you know what man like society's really changed like now there's like social media there's all these like like the internet 
But like, oh yeah, because this is like oh five. This is before Facebook and everything. Dude, this is yeah. I mean, this is kind of before Facebook. So there there was no social media. So like you would go to the gym and that was kind of like your social setting. Right. I was like, I always tell people I was a gym rat before it was cool to be a gym rat. Now like everybody's at the gym, Instagram live, selfies, TikToks, all this stuff. Back back when I was at the gym, it wasn't cool to be at the gym. Mm. You know what I mean? You were like, a, you're like a weirdo. What are you going to work out all day? <laughs> Can't make any money doing that. So um, that day, two of his friends wanted food too. And I was like, yo, Matt, I'll keep your price at three, but your boy's got to pay five. And that Capitalism. was Capitalism. There it <laughs> there is. There it was. There it is. So, um, and then literally a few days later, I was, I was cooking for the whole office and it unlocked. They say like, um, in the gym, when you work out, like if you stop working out, you lose all your muscles, right? You, you stop eating good. You stop working out, you lose it. But with your brain once it reaches a certain point, it can never go back. Once you learn mm -hmm. something, you can't unlearn it. That was a that was a, a pivotal moment in my life where once I saw it was it was just so fitting for me. Like I was cooking healthy food. I knew all the ingredients. I knew everything that was going on and I was feeding people food that they should be eating. And it was just such a fitting um it was like that was the day I discovered the reason why I am on this earth. You know, it was just such a honest living and it was something I felt so good about. And I, I was just always under the impression that like if, if you wanted to get rich, you'd have to wear a suit and like hurt people, you know, mm, like screw people over yeah. like that toxic white collar guy, that Wall Street guy who's trying to put people out on the street or whatever. Um, you know, I never thought. I just really didn't think that there was a way to become rich. Like everybody wants to be rich. Everybody wants it. But then like, how do you get it? And then how do you get it in a way that's mutually beneficial to the world and society and people, right? Cause that's mm -hmm. like the real goal. You want to be able to make a living an honest living, help people. And also, you know, and the word, whatever, rich, whatever. Had you ever had like some other type of career that as a kid, you were like, oh, I'd want to do that. And maybe I'd get rich doing it. Um, I, Yeah, like I was never like, – the thing is, dude, I was never motivated by money. It never mm. it never really talked to me. So when I was like helping people lose weight, when I was, you know, helping morbidly obese people lose lots of weight, it was like fulfilling. It was this like sure. – it was, it was what I was meant to do. So I had started cooking – for the whole office and I had gotten so many orders, I uh, I imploded. So like I was cooking out of my dad's house. And this is, this is we're still in 05 now. 05, 05, I'm 19 years old. Um, I'm, 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 a, I'm a maniac 19 year old who's just trying to take on the world. And I had, uh, I had pretty much blew my dad's house apart. And my dad and stepmom, <laughs> my dad and stepmom were like, look, dude, you got to go like find a commercial kitchen, but like, you can't do this anymore. And I, I was like, I don't know, dude. I just, I took it as like this epic loss where I was like losing my kitchen and, and I had, uh, I had like, I had like shut down the shop at that point in my life, dude, I was, I was nowhere near ready to handle that level of responsibility. And like, like, dude, if you're feeding people, that's like a man, like I'm like, a. I'm like a monk, dude, when it comes like that is to me, it's like the highest, um, what the hell am I trying to say? Like the way I handle food, right? Like you got kosher, you have halal, yes. you have like all these things. Like the way I handle food at Eat Clean Bro is like I am a religious leader. Like I am, right. I am neurotic about like food handling, the responsibility of feeding people and like all this stuff. Like food safety to me is just like, like I live, I live for it and and uh, I was like I said, dude, I was 19 years old when this happened on accident, wasn't ready for it. But that was like a splinter in my mind. And it just kept on. It, it just like it was like a crack in the windshield, dude. And it just kept going. But and, you didn't do it as a full business. Like you started right. with where you had a lot of people that you were just cooking yeah. for at the gym and whatever. But it took seven years before you actually <clears> said, <throat> it, I'm going all in on this. Yeah. So like, like I said, dude, I was always like. I'd always like cook on the side. It was like my side hustle. I bartend, promote clubs, work in nightlife. I was in college. It was like, it was always like this side hustle thing that I was doing. And, you were uh, definitely a bouncer, right? Oh, come on, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just you still got the look, man. Well, I was a wrestler, dude. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I did I did some fun stuff. I did like 
bodyguard work and stuff back in the day. So you did, body, you did actual like, yeah, security. But the thing is, people. dude, yeah, I did, but I was never armed. So when you're doing security <laughs> and <laughs> there's guns in the crowd, it's not a job you want. Right. Or, or like a knife or like, you're like, oh, dude, f this. Like I'm getting paid a hundred bucks to be here. I'm not going to get stabbed. <laughs> Was this for like celebrities? Yeah, some were celebrities, and I'll tell you this: like, I would, I, they would like, like, dude, look, I'm, I'm 36 now. I got two kids under my belt. In my younger years, I was, I was like a pretty, like I was like a pretty white boy, right? And I would be <laughs> at these hip hop clubs, and I would be like the only white kid in these, in these clubs. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, please, just like, <laughs> please, God, just don't let no one kill me, please. Because, like, it, there would there would be, like, some bad motherfuckers in these clubs, yeah. you know? And, uh, like, yeah, one of the places I worked at, dude, like, the, the club got shut down because, like, a fight broke out and some dude got his brains blown out. Oh, shit. So, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm talking, like, real, like, and then, um... And then, like, dude, I'm, I'm like, told my boss, I'm like, listen, man, like, do you got, you got anything else, like? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I got this beautiful steakhouse. You could go in Staten Island. And like, dude, the fights that were breaking out in Staten Island, <laughs> I'm like, dude, send me back to the hip hop clubs. Get me the f out of here. I'm like, these people are out of their minds. Um, Staten <sighs> Island's a different. Breed, oh my man. god, bro. I'm like, dude, I. I'm like, dude, put me back in the hip hop club. I mean, with a name like Giovanazzo, though, you'd fit right in there. Let I, me tell you. That was the problem. I did fit right in. So they were like, yo, you looking at my girl? I'm like, yo, <laughs> dude, I'm, dude, I'm getting 100 bucks. I'm not looking at nobody. Your girl's not looking at me. I'm broke. Just, I'm in the f corner with my radio. Just leave me alone, man. <sighs> just, just nobody fight each other. And if you do, I'm standing down. F this. Wait till the police get here. At a steakhouse, too. Oh, man, <laughs> it's bro. It's not even a club. Be like dinner service and like, dude, be like, dude, what the f you looking at and then like two dudes just get up some 50 year old dudes knocked out unconscious on the floor and, and it's like right in the middle of dinner and you're like jesus christ <laughs> like the f dj didn't even go on yet and this dude is just knocked out i'm like wow wow yeah dude this the, the fights were all premeditated too so like there was one night a kid hopped the bar started throwing bottles into the crowd ran oh, into the nice. kitchen with the knife i'm like yeah. this is premeditated that's nice that's totally premeditated good guy you didn't you did not think of that on your own. You were waiting all f week to do that because, I mean, you know. So yeah, my bouncer stories are funny. But you did you did some personal celebrity stuff too. Yeah, you were saying. Um, yeah, so I was at the Red Bull Lounge, and um, there was always famous people there. I think like working for Red Bull for that short time really helped me with E Clean Bro too because they were always so far ahead of everyone else. Really, like Red Bull does so much cool behind the scenes like they have like dance competitions they have like they sponsor so much cool shit. They, mm. they do so much cool shit all the time and i think like seeing that as a kid was like it was very um sometimes you just need to see it to believe it and that that's kind of what red bull was for me like you know you go into a store and you get a red bull i mean i got a celsius right here i don't know you don't really think much of it you're like yeah. yo give me the best bang for my buck who has right. the most caffeine right that's what i'm looking for but but with Red Bull, it was like they were the first to market, but like they really got it on like a street level. So like all the breakdance competitions would be sponsored by Red Bull, you know? Like they Wait, were, I don't know. They were breakdance they do breakdance uh, dude, competitions. That's where I, I almost that. died a bunch of times. Really? Back in two thousand man, two thousand eight or nine. Red Bull breaks dance break yeah. dance competitions? F crazy legs, man. Let's see. Is there a video of this? It's gotta be a video of this, right? Oh yeah, is this does this look familiar? Red Bull BC One World nah, dude, Final. That's, that's 2021, dude. I'm talking. Right, but this is what they were doing back then. Yeah, probably they were doing all types of stuff, dude. I met like oh, Kid shit. Cudi. They would do like hip hop battles, and like those were always dangerous too, man. But it, it was never as dangerous. It's just a regular steakhouse in Staten <laughs> Island. <dude. laughs> For people that aren't like from New York or New Jersey and don't understand what you're saying there. Just look up Staten Island. See if you can find some stuff. It's on, just on the, the most. Internet. It's dude. What do they call it? It's the fifth borough, but what do they call it again? I can't even remember right now. I got, I got, I got. Lo listen, I got, I got big love for Staten Island. I just <laughs> like, I don't want any problems, dude. I want to come in. I want to eat your pizza. I want to eat a couple. You know, I want to maybe go to a deli or two. And um, you know, I'm not looking at your girl, and I don't want any problems. All right. Fair enough.
So th- basically this whole time, it sounds like you're doing jobs like that, maybe a little personal training for seven years, and then yeah, dude, you're I'm, like, I'm you, a were total, you still cooking at some bro, point? I'm a, total, I'm a total f- loser for like seven years. Mm. Just like networking. But like, as the years progress, like, like, dude, like here's a funny story. This is like my life summed up, right? One of my, one of like my, my top performing affiliates, they're, they're like a husband and wife duo. The husband, back in the day, we're at this like, we're at this high school party and the kid's little brother is about to get jumped. Well, he is actually getting jumped and it's like a 12 on one. And the problem is that this kid's like 105 pounds. So like I jump in and I, and I pull the kid out of the fight cause I'm like, dude, I'm not letting a 105 pound person get jumped by 12 dudes. One kid had like a broken leg. He was like whacking him with a crutch. I'm like, I've seen enough. I'm like, dude, you're fucking, you're fucking hitting this little kid with a weapon, dude. Um, so anyway, I get him out of there. You know, Randy, Randy's pulling up. He's all juiced up. It's fucking Jersey. All right. Dudes are, dudes are juiced up. They want to fight. Of course. And, uh, <laughs> of course. So Randy's like, where are they? Listen, Randy, like there's 12 of them. I'm like, yo, your brother's all right. You know, I got him. I got him out before anything really happened. I'm like, but if you go up there, that's on you. I'm like, I'm not pulling you out of this too. I'm like, just, just get out of here. No one's hurt, you know, call it a night. And that was just like a, a, a bizarre favor, you know, like I didn't have to help his brother, but like I did. And then there was this other time at the gym, one of my buddy's friends, like I, I would like, I would just, I've done a lot of fucking nice things for people over the years. It's good. Well, yeah, because like when you start a business, like you really need to, you really need people to pull for you. You Fuck need yeah. people to like, you need friendships. Because like it, karma, man, it's good yeah, karma. But I didn't know any of this was going to happen. You sure. know what I mean? Like when when my boy Jesse called me up to go. <laughs> these are these are like some Jer- Jer- Jersey War stories. We love that. This um, is a New Jersey podcast, so we we got to remind people. Hit me. I don't even know how to begin the story, man. It's just there's. <laughs> basically bro there's this fucking dude anthony he's all juiced up he's got like his wife at the gym blah 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 they're going through this terrible divorce he starts getting all like fucked up all the time takes all these pills he gets into this horrible car accident on route nine mm. he's explaining to the cop that he was making a left on like, he was at the at the stoplight making a left on route nine in new jersey there's drug handles you can't make a left so mm-hmm. like at that point, dude, he was in the emergency room, stripped down to his tidy whities and his shit his pants. All right. <laughs> so Jesse has me go and he's like, yo, kid, you got to go get Anthony. Like he's in bad shape. Like just go get him, get him from the hospital. <laughs> but like he was handcuffed to the hospital bed. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, the cop, the cop is, listen, dude, you're in a small room and there's this big juiced up motherfucker who shit his pants and there's this fucking clump of shit in his tidy whities and you're just like oh god it smelled horrible like i wanted to get out of there the yeah. cop wanted to get out of there too oh, cops can't... like listen this guy's got like a fucking dui if he leaves this hospital room like it's on you i had oh, to like so sign this hammered when he did this yeah i had to sign the, like, I, I don't know like i signed this waiver for him like i, I fucking should have never signed that waiver too <laughs> <laughs> but i was like i was like a, a kid you know like a dumb ass kid i would have gotten so much trouble if his big drunk ass tried to leave but you know he was handcuffed to the bed that was a, that was a wild fucking story man what a maniac i was also like so <laughs> this is a new jersey podcast right yes all right so <laughs> When I started cooking food, I was cooking for like fucking maniacs. So like it all started in the mortgage world. So like mm. I was cooking for all these fucking mortgage guys. And and then 2000, you know, I started doing this in 2005, 2005, 2006, people were making money hand over fist. Oh shit. <laughs> that, that, that just went upstairs, so I like, realized. When you watch The Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. you think that is unbelievable. But I lived it. I saw yeah. that type of shit. So I would be at these offices and I, w- I would be like bringing in meals, right? And and you walk up to this dude with like a $10,000 suit, right? And he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like, hey kid, you cooking meals? And I'd be like, yeah. And he's like, how much you got there? And like, I'd just be like, you know, I got, uh, got this, got this. He's like, how much, how much? He'd pull out a wad of hundreds. I'd be like, oh, I got like $400. 
worth of food, bro. He would just fucking whoa, 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 give me 400 bucks, take all the food out of a box and just fucking body slam it into yeah. the garbage. And he'd be like, good, good job, kid. See you tomorrow. <laughs> and I'd be like, yo, what the fuck just happened? Like, and, and it was just, dude, it, it was, um, being subjected to that life and seeing like, there's all these young kids, there's like Lamborghinis, there's Ferraris the dude driving the seven series beamer is just getting laughed at like yeah. yo, look at this fucking pathetic loser um and and there's all these like you know people are making these custom suits and there's somebody outside detailing cars at all times and everyone's got these insane suits i'm like 19 20 years old dude my fucking eyes are getting blown back through like my head like with all this jersey and these are all like brooklyn street guys coming into jersey like <laughs> that's so, the first bad stuff. oh dude that's when you know it's a problem <laughs> you see a bunch of fucking guys with a vowel at the end of the last name from brooklyn and jersey dude, something's happening <laughs> so like things were really crazy you know you're, you're just seeing all types of crazy stuff crazy uh crazy parties and i everybody everybody always liked me you know i would always um I guess, I guess one of the things back then was I had a lot of time, you know, mm -hmm. that was like, now I have no time back then I had time. So like, I would always help people with workouts, diet plans. Like a lot of these older guys gave me so much business advice and they spent so like, they gave me so many life lessons that sure. I got to learn, but like, I was always there for them. I'm like, I guess their fitness journey. So like. I'd put them through workouts. Like before I said, I was always training people for free. Like I was playing the, I, I didn't know I was playing the long game. Like I didn't know. I was just trying to help people work out. Cause I love working out so much. I love eating healthy. I loved all this stuff so much. It's like, it was like a, uh, it was like a wildfire of passion, dude. Like I didn't care about time. I didn't care about money. Like if you wanted to listen and learn about like protein and exercise, <laughs> like I I'm would just, guy. I would just hang out with you all day. So, um, and that's what I did for years. And I, and I hung out with a lot of these guys and, but then like, <laughs> then the mortgage crisis happened, then the crisis happened. And, um, and then, and then shit started hitting the fan. I'll never forget, dude. Cause it was like, it's a wild time. Man. Well, it was like, they start like, basically they always say like, you got to cut the fucking head off the snake or whatever, however the saying yes. goes. So it was like the big dog went down and you're like, Oh fuck. Like the, you know, like the boss, like dude, you know, like got arrested or oh, yeah, dude, feds would come in, fucking take all the computers. So oh, bro. Re oh wait, what, what else was going on here then? Oh dude, people were, there was a lot of fucking crime that occurred. Well, we know this about the financial crisis, but you don't hear much about guys who ever got arrested because they didn't charge a lot of people. They oh, charged the man. I think they charged, they didn't even charge the countrywide guy, Mozilla, did they? Um, I have to look well, that up. It, it probably all depends on like, there's a lot that goes into these things, but like. Was he doing like appraisal? Uh, I know those guys went down too. I was involved. <laughs> I was cooking for all of the real estate guys. So like I had friends who were appraisers who all went down. You know, oh. so like my buddy, Paul, Paul would always be like, Paul would always be like, Jamie, you know, that you, you just got to like, help me. Like, you know, the chili, it's just too spicy. It's just too spicy. And I'm like, Paul, just fucking man up, dude. It's chili. Like deal with it. Right. <laughs> and then like, I used to give Paul meals, like 10 meals a week, every week. Paul was like one of my, one of my guys. And then one day Paul just stopped answering the fucking phone. And I thought, fuck. He's finally had enough. <laughs> <laughs> the chili is too spicy. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, fuck, I should have listened to him, you know? Paul's in a jail cell. Dude, months go by. I get this call from this number like, yo, uh, do you see Paul? I'm like, yeah. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I was with Paul this morning. He's like, hockey Paul? I'm like, no, Paul Kushner. I'm like, I haven't seen Hockey Paul in, because it was like Hockey Paul. Mm. So I haven't seen Hockey Paul in uh, in a while. He goes, dude, he got picked up. I'm like, fuck. He goes, yeah, dude, he's he's locked up. I'm like, shit. He's what like, yeah. were they, they, so they were doing like fraud on appraisals and stuff like that, I guess? Yeah, bro, you go to a fucking house in Newark. Yeah. That's decrepit, and you give it a six hundred thousand dollar value. You're going to fucking jail. <laughs> this was literally now, in The Sopranos. <laughs> you do that fucking fourteen thousand times, <laughs> you're going to fucking jail. <laughs> you know, I like so. 
you know, um, I uh, so basically, dude, one of my one of my mentors was this guy Dave, and he was basically, you know, I feel bad. He should have never have done this, but like, he was basically what he was doing was he was he was like, say you take a mortgage out on this house, well, like he would go and issue the mortgage to multiple banks. So you would get your mortgage, say for like six hundred thousand. And then he would take 600,000 like two or three more times and use your mortgage. And like, you know, because once the fucking shit happened, he thought, oh, well, I could, you know, I can adjust. I can make it up here. I could pay it back. No one's going to know. The problem is once the fucking, once the ground collapsed, there was no way to pay it back. And then that's when like. Numbers don't add up. And like, look, should never have done that. Should have never (laughs) have done it. And whatever his intentions were of paying it back. Should never have done that. We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> he did. He did. He did a good amount of time. But then, uh, dude, I'll never forget, bro. I'm like, and, and basically, what would happen is like, you know, like so, like Dave went down, and then like all those lieutenants moved on, and then like opened the new bank, and then like went oh, down the street. Cute. That's nice. And then like those guys would go down, and they'd open up. So like, <laughs> and then I was just like driving my fucking Nissan Maxima around, following all these guys with meals, and. Uh, I'll never forget. I like roll up to this, uh, I roll up to this office and, um, there's like this old, there's like this old timer, you know, three piece suit, smoking a cigarette and like the punchlines that these fucking guys always got me with were just so great. Right. So, uh, this dude, this old dude, he's like, Hey kid. Yeah. He's like, you selling meals? I'm like, yeah, like, not today. You're not. I'm like, what? He goes, feds came, took all the computers. Look, bro. You look at the door. There's this fucking giant lock on the door. And I was just like, fuck. Another like, one. God damn it. Like, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, um, it, it was almost like a gangster movie where like, you got to see the rise and the fall and, uh, yeah, the fall. You know, it was funny, too, because people were like, they were like, dude, listen, bro. They're like, we're going to get you in these multi-homes in Newark. They're like, you put no money down. You just got to pay the 1200 a month. And I'm like, wow, fuck. Like, I'm 19. I'm like, yeah, man, I could be like a real estate owner. I, and like, and my dad's like, what are you fucking stupid? He's like, that's a fucking balloon rate. Like, in two years, he's like, stop. He's like, just fucking stop. He's like, you're not buying. And like, dude. All these guys that were doing yeah. this with the fucking adjustable rates, it's like thank you God for not letting me do any of that. But so many people got caught in that destroyed. Man. But <clears throat> awful, bro. They say there's like this financial oh, fuck. You know what, dude? Like people go on podcasts are so articulate. Unlike me, this Jersey motherfucker. Oh, you're doing great. But I'm enjoying this. <laughs> um, they say that like you can get the financial um, climate off like strippers. And like someone predicted yes. the mortgage collapse based off like the yes. real estate that strippers owned. And I mean, the writing was on the <laughs> wall. Real estate I mean, dude, you could, they, people were getting, dude, there was no docs. There was no doc oh. mortgages. You didn't oh, have to gosh. show income. Yeah. You could have got a fucking mortgage and had no job. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was like, that's what was happening. And then they had a pre like, there is a reason that all these guys went to jail. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's this guy, Jared Dillian, who was a legendary Wall Street trader unrelated to the mortgage stuff back in the 2000s. He, when everything crashed, he was at Lehman Brothers, which was one of the banks that failed. He left and he continued writing a newsletter that he had written on Wall Street and he would send it to everyone in the morning and he made that his career. So he's like this brilliant behavioral finance guy. So he's like emotionless and just looks at what's everyone doing and why are they doing it? And what does that say about where I need to put my money? And he has this theory called the seafood tower theory Mm. where he says, if you go into New York city, go into any decent restaurant and you start seeing a bunch of fucking seafood towers on the table, sell everything because seafood towers are this like gluttonous show of wealth or, you know, six stories, six stories tall, but you pay five, 600 bucks for it. And it's really about $85 worth of seafood. So people, when they're feeling complacent and feeling like they could just toss around money, they're buying seafood towers so if you see a lot that's it but the stripper one that's my new favorite yeah (laughs) that's fucking great yeah oh man i love seafood towers 
They are good. Yeah. I gotta say. I haven't had them in a while, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I dated a girl one time who had a lot of money and she would get seafood towers at restaurants and I did, I did enjoy that. Yeah. Oh good. yeah. Dude, the oysters. Always, I always sub out the clams for oysters. I don't know, man. Just, I, I love New England clam chowder, but I can't get, I, I just, I, I don't enjoy the raw clams. I'd rather just pump out oysters you know obviously. i'm with you i don't like raw clam i'm out on raw clams yeah it's it's not my favorite it feels weird something it's, about it it's not know? my favorite yeah yo linguine and clams all day yes all day yes. just not the raw ones i'll eat them they got to be warm and cooked sorry I, I like them i like them cooked better too so but uh so back to um yeah your eat, business went up in flames when the mortgage did uh yeah i mean um well um yeah, a lot of my a lot of my good customers got sent away, <laughs> and well, um, some good men out there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know what? I'll I'll leave you with this, man. This guy actually died, but just to tell you like how crazy people were back then. Um, there was this guy, fucking Elliot, and he comes up to me one day and he's like, "Listen, Jamie, like you know, I know." He's like, "Dude, I know you like to drink, you like to get fucked up." He goes, "But listen to me." He goes. You got to smoke crack. <laughs> I, go, I go, what the fuck did you just say to me? He goes, dude, just smoke a little crack. He goes, it sounds it sounds crazy, but like, man, he's like, there's nothing better. And I'm like, Elliot, I go, listen to me, man. I'm not going to smoke crack. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just, the shit had just gotten, bro, like, dude, just, I guess life in general at that time, things have things had gotten so far out of control I will never like what grown adult is like telling a 20 or like in what state of mind is everyone? You know what I mean? Right. Like <laughs> you kind of like, it seems like you're just kind of like a happy wander during these years. I was, you I don't was really so, know what's going on, but you're just I taking was, it as it goes. I was so happy to be around like all these like young, successful guys. And there, there were, there were a bunch of older successful guys who were responsible, but then there was like young lunatics and it was like this, it, it was a pretty, it was a very, like, I, I guess like my entire life has been kind of unique. I've always been in really unique places, but those were the, those were the fundamental years. And then, you know, time went on, mortgage crash. I, I didn't like, I didn't know that it was possible to do this. You know, in reality, e clean bro happened because my back was up against the wall. I couldn't get a job anywhere else. And like, I had no other choice. And I had to make it happen. And in and in 2013, you know, January January 13th, 2013, my phone rang, and it was that same guy from the locker room in 2005 who asked mm. me what I ate. And I just felt like it was like a sign from God. And this is a few months after Hurricane Sandy, no? Yep. Yeah. Right after. Mm -hmm. So then he asked me if I was still cooking. I put my hand, I put my palm over the phone. And I scream over in the next room, yo, Paul, <laughs> you think your parents care if I cook at their house? <laughs> and uh, and he's like, nah, man. He's like, do it. So I'm like, yeah, bro, of course I'm still cooking. <laughs> We're like in I, business. Like I fucking lied. I'm like, yo, man, what do you want? So over the years, like I was this wanderer, right? I had all, I had a whole Rolodex of people who liked my food that I used mm -hmm. to cook for. So I got his order in and I just started going down all my food contacts. It'd be like, it'd be like AJ food, Matt food, Tom food. And I just started going down all my food contacts. Like, yo, I'm cooking. Like, I'll be, I'll be out. Like, you know, I'll get you food tomorrow. Like, do you want anything? And I put an order in and I did like 82 meals that week, man. Right away. Well, dude, I had a roll. Of, I had years of yeah. contacts. Yeah, but got up and moving right away. That's it was, good. It, yeah, I mean... So it was, well, the thing is, it was like, I'm already cooking for Matt and four of his friends. Like I might as well make this shit worth my time. So yeah. that's why I was trying to like blow it up as much as I could. And then, um, did you quit your job? No, well, I couldn't. So I had, I had worked, you know, the bartending <clears throat> job and then I, uh, and I was cooking and then I was kind of just, um, I was just kind of like begging and borrowing. My last day cooking at Paul's house, <clears throat> I was in a fucking explosion, dude. The guy fucking. <laughs> what do you mean an explosion? Dude, it was horrible. 
the guy Nelson that was helping me, right? Because I, I worked in restaurants, so like I was, I was like the bar manager of this restaurant in South Amboy that I was in. So I go to Perth Amboy, pick them up, we like cook, get it all done, and uh, bro, we turned to fuck. It was a propane. So basically, dude, propane, propane is a heavy gas, and it sinks <laughs> to the floor. Oh, no. Nelson had turned on the grill, and it was all like the house was uh, like a propane house, and uh, he um. Oh my god, dude! He fucking never lit the grill. So he's like, "Yo, Jamie, light oh. the grill," and I'm like, "Nelson, how long has the gas been on?" <clears throat> and he's like, "I don't know, just light the grill." <laughs> <laughs> Not too long. So like, the Spanish guys. <clears throat> here's the thing, dude. When you work in a kitchen, like, they'll they will eat you alive. Like, you got to stand your ground and you got to work hard and you can't be a puss. So like. You know, like I got actually my scars on my hands are kind of going away. So I'm like, yo, I'm not backing down. Motherfucker said light. I'm lighting it. So I, I, I go, I'll go like, I'll never forget, dude. The fucking grill lighter's like click, click, <laughs> click, and then and then the fucking flame and it's like, <laughs> and then dude, the second I heard that noise, I was like, oh <laughs> fuck, and like, like all the oxygen is being fucking pulled, and oh. then it's like, <laughs> boom, dude. The adrenaline hit so hard, bro. I thought, I thought I, I thought I blew my dick off, bro. The fucking, oh. the doors, everything fucking exploded. I got hit in the leg with, uh, like the grill scraper hit me in the leg. All the fucking wood, the whole island, everything in the kitchen. Like there had been a stick of dynamite just, and I'm like, I'm like looking for the. Like I'm thinking, and this is still at Paul's parents' bro, house. Bro, Paul's parents. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking nuclear bomb went off in parents' house. So all these thoughts are running through my head. Like, oh my god, I was just in an explosion. I'm bleeding. My eyebrows are singed. My all oh. the fucking all the hair on my arm is on fire. I'm literally like I'm partially on fire, but like I just blew up my buddy's kitchen. Like a real <laughs> his explosion. Parents kitchen. His parents' kitchen. And I'm like, yo, what do I do, right? Like, is there a gas leak? Am I going to blow up the neighborhood? So I'm like trying to find the emergency gas switch. I'm trying to like turn off the gas. I'm trying to fucking think about how do I put this back together? You know, like <laughs> how, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> like, I got fucking food I have to deliver still, right? So I got all this shit I got to do. Anyway, somehow, miraculously, dude, it was all like um, I was able to put the shit back together. Really? And I was able to get people their food. Wait, did it like turn? So when it all the things when it hit you low, did it like kind of was it one of those where it like catches flame in the air and then kind of goes out by itself right it away? It went out. Yeah, it went out. The doors. I got hit with the doors, and I got hit. I got hit with a grill scraper, and the grill shot forward. So like I got I got hit with a bunch of things, but then from the back, all the all the wood, um, the wood had gotten like. I guess it was all like pieces. Like it didn't, it was, it was very bizarre, man. It was like compartments got blown out. So like, I just, I put everything back together and it was a uh, good day for Paul's parents. Didn't lose the house. Yeah. <laughs> but it was at that point I said no more fucking cooking at his house. Mm. So that was the last day I cooked at Paul's house. And then I started at the, uh, at the restaurant I was managing. Oh, you started cooking there. At, after the explosion, yeah, after the explosion, that was it. I was like, yeah, dude, do it. I'm fucking, I'm out of here. Um, there's just too much on my plate. Like, I don't want to burn Paul's house down. I don't want to <laughs> blow up. It's time to move on to a commercial space. So, and then, uh, yeah, and then I, be I begged and begged and borrowed. And uh, yeah, I was at I was at the spot in South Amboy for for like a couple weeks. But that was like the beginning of like shady owners trying to like hijack, you know, because people knew I was on to something. So like that guy was trying to kind of, he was trying to weasel his way oh, in. He wanted a piece. He wanted a piece. And then like, then did I you left. have it? When did you think of Eat Clean Bro? Was that at the beginning or? So <laughs> I guess like it was around April 2013. So when I started cooking for Mike, so. <laughs> I met I met Mike the situation before he was famous. We were friends, and he used to work at that mortgage place. I was telling you. About. Oh wait, Jersey Shore guy oh, yeah. worked at the mortgage <laughs> Yo, place. Dude, it was a, dude. You wouldn't believe the. Come so on. basically, bro, just to paint a fucking picture of how <laughs> fucked up this place was, you had me and my boy Seth selling food. 
You had fucking Mike the Situation. You had all these fucking maniacs Ooh. in this mortgage bank. And like, it, it it was a riot, dude. It was an absolute riot. If they had a camera crew in this fucking place, dude, it'd be, it would be a fucking, <laughs> they would just be on fire. And uh, so one of the funniest things about Mike. So he didn't get locked up from that, I guess. Mike, um, no, he didn't. He didn't like, he got, that was around the time he, he wanted to be in uh he, he was also a fucking maniac, but he, um, yeah, he, he wanted to be in, um, he wanted to do TV. So he got out of the mortgages and went into TV and, uh, <laughs> his story, if Good you ever, move. yeah, if you ever talk to him, dude, his story is fucking hilarious, man. So he, he is a, he is a riot. Still to this day, he's one of the funniest fucking people you ever meet. And, um, we should do a podcast with him. Bring him through. Yeah. Um, he'll, he'll probably, he <laughs> Getting them here will be a challenge, but um, we'll figure. I have the third. I just got the third mic, so we're gonna have we're gonna have a three mic setup right there. So but yeah, we should do that. So basically, what was happening was, <laughs> me and Mike are totally different people, and we were in two thousand fucking seven or whatever. So <laughs> anyway, so Seth, basically, Mike and Seth were friends from the gym. I didn't really know Mike then, but like we, be, I became friends with Mike through through my friend Seth. So like I used to like keep track of everybody's tab. And Mike, Mike would always be like, oh, yeah, throw it on my tab. And, like, dude, we were selling $5 meals, okay? $5. <laughs> that was the price. Well, I go to Seth. I go, yo, Seth, like, your boy Mike, his tab's up to 300 bucks. I'm like, he's getting $5 meal. It's like, do you know how many days, like, you're not paying for your bill to get up to 300 bucks? So, um, so I'm like, yo, Mike. He, he goes, yeah, I throw it on my tab. I'm like, yo, Mike, I got to talk to you about the tab. I'm like fucking tabs up to 300 bucks he's like 300 bucks he's like oh man so he's like yo, yo, yo come here come here right and uh so he's like yo come walk out to the car so like a lot of the times you'd walk out to the car and like people would pay you like i don't know why they didn't bring their wallet but like it wasn't an unusual thing to go walk out to the car and get paid it did it wasn't unusual until like <laughs> until he asked <laughs> dude he pulls out this fucking like stolen navigation right like this uh <laughs> this old school um oh, what the fuck was it like, like a tom one, tom yeah, like yeah, before yeah. I, bro back dude this was before yes. smartphones so yeah. like you have a navi and it was like a garmin or something it was fucking, i had one all yeah. right and he's like well um you know i got this navigation <laughs> you guys can have it and dude, me, I just start fucking, I just start laughing hysterically. I'm like, dude, I'm like, bro, keep the navigation. I'm like, your fucking, your fucking lunch is on us from now on. Like, just don't, you know, you're good, bro. You're good for one meal a day. All right. Like that's on, like you are the funniest motherfucker I have ever seen in my life. Um, and, and uh, something like I'll never forget. And, uh, I, I really fucking liked, you know. He was, it was only a matter of time before he became a star because that fucking kid is, he is, he, he's got it. He's just ridiculously funny. And yeah. like, I, I don't know what possessed him to try to trade a fucking, <laughs> there was two of us. There was me and Seth. What are me and Seth going to do with one navigation? Jerk each other off. Yeah. Like, like, oh yeah, you get it for one week. I get it for one week. Like, I'm, I'm like, dude, this is, this is fucking, this is so funny. But that's um, back when he's at the mortgage place. So this is years ago. Right? Yeah, it's like 2007, 2008. And yeah. then when was Jersey Shore? Like 09? Something like that? It aired in 09. And dude, God, that thing, that was the biggest show in the world when it was on. Dude, I, uh, yeah. It was, um, oh my God, yeah, it was fucking, dude, it took the, it, took, it, it set the world on fire. <laughs> yeah. What really, bro, so I'll say this. I think Mike, I think Mike made the show. I think Snooki getting punched in the face like live television that was good that just those just mike and snooki getting punched in the face was like that was like the shock value was just so extreme yeah that like i don't i think like that like i, like I told nicole like i love nicole she's the fucking coolest person ever but like i'm like dude you that fucking shot to the face just like cemented <laughs> you guys as stars forever. She's like, yeah, you know, I took one for the team. I'm like, she's like, that was just such a brutal shot. That guy really fucking yeah. snuck her, dude. Yeah. That dude held nothing back with that shot. Yeah, and that and was that was real, dude. Too. And she's little. Yeah, she she's... is little, dude. She's like fucking four eleven, like a hundred. Oh, pounds. she's that short. She is fucking little. Like I, I could never imagine. Short. 
I just never imagined like hitting a girl, but like hitting, hitting Nicole, like she's so small, dude. That is just such a fucked up, like she's so small. And that dude really fucking wound up. Like he fucking looked like, oh my God. What, God, did, uh, what, what, what caused that again? She was just like destroying him pretty bad. Like, it was, <laughs> he just couldn't live with it. He was being completely humiliated on television. And then. Uh, couldn't take it. Yeah, no, he couldn't take it. But yeah. uh, <clears throat> tough so, look for him. So, man, we've we've covered a lot of New Jersey ground. Yeah, this this turned into a Jersey podcast. <laughs> yeah, real quick. I mean, but you hit. I, I imagine like when you actually launched in like 2013 and stuff. So you were saying like you hit up people like this. So with the situation, like obviously he was an early guy to sign on and like give you. <clears throat> yeah. So like, backing. like you said, this is a Jersey podcast, and I saw his brother Frank. <laughs> of course, he's got a brother named Frank. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I saw fucking Frank at GNC, all right, <laughs> at the mall. <laughs> so I'm at the mall and I see Frank. <clears throat> I'm like, yo, Frank, yo, just let Mike know, it's like Jamie's cooking. This is before I called myself E Clean, bro. I just like, see, the thing is, we back up. I had I had the street cred, okay. So Frank's like, yeah, let me get your number, or whatever, and like. So I'm liking where this is going because this is going to lead into how E Clean Bro became an iconic, famous <laughs> brand. <laughs> oh, dude, we're on a fucking roll. So Frank is like, yeah, you know, I'll get your number. Like, I'll talk it over to the family. So Mark is like the leader of the family. <laughs> so Frank gets me a meeting with the family right so like it's mark it's it's fucking frank we're in this conference room and like they're all like we're all just like negotiating and shit i'm gonna start cooking for the whole family and uh whatever i think like my price was at like 750 at the time mark was trying to get me down and i'm like yo mark like it's just me man like it sounds like a drug deal too. It, That's it's the always part yeah i know <laughs> i know i'll tell you yeah i've had I was doing custom meals for a while and then like I, I met up with this like giant fucking dude and uh I stopped basically dude I stopped like kind of doing custom meals simply because if you do a scoop cup of rice versus like a weighed cup of rice you can get like a different result and this dude like broke out the scale and started weighing the rice and i'm oh, like no. bro like i've had enough like i'm fucking done so like he beat me for a giant order because he like dude it, it did go down like a drug deal it was like behind <laughs> it was in the parking lot of a gym and i was like yo dude fuck this guy like why am i doing this i'm like like whatever so now if i ever do anything custom related which i don't but like it's all down to like the fluid fucking ounce or how much the fucking ounce weighs you know like eight ounces no discrepancy oh my god oh it's so annoying but uh so yeah so i got the deal with mike and then frank was like they they had this show they were pitching and you know who's that um who's that like really funny asian comedian he's always like breaking balls with like how chinese parents are to their kids like you not doctor yet or like you know that guy he does those reels are really funny is that the guy like, who he was worked, in Silicon Valley? I, he's like, he is nine years old. He has three jobs. He has 23 years experience. And he's like, how is he nine with 23 years experience? He's like, three jobs, nine. Like, anyway, but basically, dude. Jimmy O? I don't know, dude. He's really funny. All of his shit is super funny, but. This guy? I'll put him behind you. Um, that guy? No, no. Different guy? Okay. We'll find it later. But, uh, but anyway. My my dad's my dad's like an old school Italian guy, dude. So like, you don't say. He was always super hard on me, and I told him, I'm like, yo, man, I might I might be on TV, and he's like, well, you fucking idiot. <laughs> we're gonna have to, you know, we're gonna have to get you insurance because it was always just like I was cooking for my friends, and it was like super small. So that's when like you know he helped me out. He helped hit me up with uh like Legal Zoom, and that's when we started to come up with the name. And I didn't know what I wanted to call it. I was kind of scared to call it anything because I had failed so many times. And he was like, you know, why don't you call it E Clean Bro? Oh, your dad thought of that? Yeah. And I'm like, all right. I, I was like, I liked it because it was Eats Clean Bro and it was easy to remember and spell. Yep. And it, it was a real, it was like a real, like, first impression of, like, who I am. 
Yes. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I was hiding anything. It's very down to earth. Yeah. But you also got to remember, like, now you got, like, slutty vegan. You got egg slut. You have all these, like, racy names. Mm -hmm. Before 2013, there was no, like, nobody was taking yeah, a shot yeah. at, like, being a fucking wild name. Like, people thought I was out of my mind to call myself E-Clean Bro. Um, You know, now, like, you know, like, there's, like, big gay ice cream and stuff. Right. Like, there's all types of crazy names that are they, just... First, they call you crazy. Right. Then they want to do it. There's a lot of edgy names. And big big gay ice cream may have been before... I don't actually know, but but it's New York City. So, like, you could... I'm pretty sure that they're, they're like, ice cream trucks in the city. But anyway, um, so, yeah, my dad was, like, E-Clean Bro. People thought I was crazy. We got the domain name, which... I didn't think I was going to get that domain name, but nobody was crazy enough to call themselves E Clean Bro <laughs> in 2013. So, um, yeah, we got the name uh, like a year or two later, got the trademark. And uh, it was all because we were anticipating like being on a TV show with like Mike the Situation and his family. What was the he wanted? To, so he was pitching like a reality show for his family on like MTV or something? No, or? it wasn't MTV. It was. Um, <sighs> channel was it bravo no it wasn't bravo it was like a uh vh1 no it wasn't it was on like a uh i don't know why i know all these but they're made those are major networks um fuck dude I, I can't even think about it i can't recall but did he end up getting that um did they it, do it? it aired it aired there was like pilots and shit aired um <laughs> Mike got into a fight with Frank at the tanning, tanning <laughs> salon. You know, like it was, it's just funny, like funny shit. Um, you know, it's just funny. What so was, what was the other one? The one guy I used to know up in North Jersey, Lorenzo Gungala. I don't know where he is these days. What fucking one was he in? See, the problem is there were so, after Jersey Shore, there were so many like that. Like we know Real Housewives in New Jersey because that's like a series or whatever. Yeah. But then there were so many other little ones. I can't keep track of them. You but, just, dude. You will never <clears throat> so like I'm close with Mike. I'm I'm close with Jenny. Those are like my two great friends. And then, you know, I'm friends with Nicole. How's but she like, doing these days? I, I love her. She is the coolest fucking person ever. So is Jenny, so is Mike. But like I, like Sammy too. I haven't like I haven't uh I haven't spoken to her in a while, but like like you can just never reenact. Like you never, you, you just never get that cast again. Like the first no. time I met Ronnie, he was like covered in like this road rash because like his girlfriend like fucking ran him over in the car, <laughs> and you're, you're just like, like Ron, what are you fucking doing, dude? You're a multimillionaire. Like you made it. Like you're getting into these fucking fights with your girlfriend. She ran you over in a car. Like what? Yeah. Like, but it's like, dude, it's just what makes them so entertaining. Like lovable. Yeah. You can't look away. Yeah. You can take them and out of Jersey, it, but you can't take the Jersey out of them. Like, dude, Angelina's on a fucking ring camera throwing chicken nuggets at a handicapped person. Like, <laughs> like how do you, like, and that's going. Do we going, have a video of that? Uh, dude. I, <laughs> I got it. I'm sorry. You're giving so many good ones. Some of these got to be on video. Minus I'm, the ones I'm just watch, saying, so. like, how do you not, how do you just not tune into these people, man? It's. So she was thrown man. I, I guess she didn't know they were handicapped. <laughs> it was like a handicap part. Maybe she was parked in a handicapped oh, no. spot and she was throwing chicken nuggets at somebody. <laughs> um, <laughs> she is fucking funny, man. It's uh, just, it's just, it's just so entertaining. But like, when did you start to realize though that because for people out oh, there who I'm aren't, so sorry, the segue I forgot. Dude, what was the segue? Like, so basically, man. Um. What had happened was I started cooking for Mike. My buddy Sean on Facebook checked in to the Olympia. Now, like, I went to Free Old Borough. We had a lot of – we had all these great friends in high school. But, like, Sean never played sports. He was just, like, the token Indian dude. Friends with everybody, sweetheart. Everybody loved Sean. But like Sean was not an athlete, he was not a bodybuilder, and never tried to be one. It wasn't like he was trying. He just mm. never worked out, never gave a fuck about bodybuilding. I was a total meathead. My life was dedicated to lifting weights, eating chicken, eating fucking steak. So I hit up Sean, and I'm like, dude, 
like, what are you doing at the Olympia? And he goes, oh, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm the CFO of Shreds. And this is 2013. And Shreds is the pioneer of influencer marketing. So mm. it's like every single fucking person you see on the internet now selling a product on social media was never like that until Shreds. Shreds was the first fucking company to bombard really? the internet with re like people like me and you. Shreds. I don't know if I remember that. Shreds company. Shreds. S H R E D Z. Oh, E D Z. I have it as Z. S. Yeah. Got it. Shreds took a bunch of like normal people who worked out at the gym and made them famous on the internet. Oh, these are like diet pills and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's unsurprising. So. <laughs> So what's really funny, so Arvin, Arvin was on the show and I was like, I wish there was a way I could, I could work with you. Wait, which show? I lost your first Jersey second. Shore. Got it. Okay. Arvin, Arvin like, I think hooked up with Sammy in one of the seasons. He was like Mike's friend. Okay. They were at like Bamboo somewhere in Seaside, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All Always shredded. Sell. Seaside was the spot. Yeah. So, so Mike and Arvin were friends and- Sean got me in, so I drove up to Jersey City with some meals. I met Arvin. Sean's like, oh, yeah, Arvin, uh, Arvin actually heard of you. So, like, Frank would save all the containers. That's Situation's brother, Frank. Right. So there was a whole pantry filled with, like, e -clean bro containers. So that's how, like, Arvin heard of me. And Arvin mm -hmm. was like, Frank, like, what are you doing with all these fucking containers? Like... <laughs> recycle them or something he's like no 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 so like frank had this huge stash of and that's how that's how arvin heard of me i came in arvin really liked me and i started cooking for for like arvin and and all the the guys at shreds and then he had all of the most like influential fitness people in the in the mm. industry at the time so that's when i started cooking for all those guys they started doing posts for me and i started getting like pretty big traction online on instagram and it wasn't until I got introduced to Massey, who at the time was Manco Fit. She was the most, um, she had a million followers on Instagram back in 2013, which was like unheard of. Yeah. And she was the biggest like Latino fitness influencer, you know, celebrity personal trainer, blah, blah, blah. I started cooking for Massey and she really liked me. And then she introduced me to Lala Anthony. Carmelo's wife? Carmelo's wife, yeah. And uh, I started cooking for her. I became friends with Lala. I became friends with Mello. Were you doing all custom meals for these people? No, no. I took every opportunity to, like, every time I would get another famous customer, I would just take that opportunity to level up my game. Because mm. I wanted to make sure that the people who were getting my food got the same food as famous people. I didn't want to, like, yeah. I didn't want to be some fucking dork who is lighting it up for a famous person and then, like, shitting on my bread and butter. Good for you. Your everyday people are your bread and butter, dude. The second yes. they give up on you, you're done. You're toast. I've cooked for more famous people. I can't even remember all the famous people I've cooked for. They come and go. But like your everyday, you know, people who support you, they're the ones that need to be happy. So Lala blew me up, dude. She fucking put me on and like she did a post for me. My fucking bro, my phone wouldn't work. Because you had too much coming in. It was too much coming in. Mm -hmm. Like my iPhone just crashed. Emails crashed for like two days. I got 40,000 followers in like 24 hours. Damn. And I went viral. Yeah, Chris uh, Chris Jenner was following me. Kevin Hart was following me. Uh, I think they followed me because they were writing cookbooks and just dumped me after they got what they <laughs> needed. But like there was a time they were following me. Um, and then so – once like I had that buzz with Lala see like there's famous people but like there's people with clout Lala's one of those people dude like Lala says jump people just start jumping so when she gave me that um and plus back in 2013 time frame 2014 when like a celebrity endorsed you it was more meaningful than it is now sure it's like yeah. it's really diluted so much of it now so Lala's endorsement was like the trajectory that just, I had a lot of street cred in New Jersey, but like Lala's endorsement just made me the man in New York. You know, I was in with the Knicks, 
coming into Madison Square Garden, like, oh, that's Carmelo's boy, you know, walking into the <laughs> garden. I'm like, dude, I was like fucking crying in my car a year and a half ago, like not knowing what I wanted to do in my life. And now being escorted around Madison Square Garden, I thought like, this is like a dream come true. So I started cooking for the Knicks and then like I got in all like, you know, Z100, um, oh, DJ the radio Sus station. One, like, like yeah. all the radios, all like all like the uh, the radio stations. And then like Lala set me up with uh, Angie, Beyonce's cousin. I started cooking for um, you know Jay Z's Jay Z's um, cousin Jarrell. And I just got like hooked up with that family, and um, you were just this is network web like I've ever seen. Oh, dude, it just it just it just spread like wildfire. But I think it was because like I never asked anybody for shit. So it's not like yeah. I become friends with this rich person, I ask him for money, or become friends with this famous person, I ask him for fame. Like, it's funny just, how that works. I've just always been trying to level up my game and make my food better. And, you know, like I could never repay Lala for what she did. But now I try to be involved in Lala's charity. So like she's helping kids at Rikers Island. And like I try to net, I try to share my network with her of attorneys. And I try to just make sure that like nobody's stabbing her in the back or nobody's snaking her. So I set her up with a bunch of attorneys that are down to work for free. So like that helps her a little. It's nothing compared to what she did for me. But like I will always be there for her and I will I will do whatever I can to help her any any way possible. And and there's times she calls me for advice and it's just the greatest compliment like ever. Um it's incredibly humbling when like people like that call me and ask for my opinion and stuff like that it's just like it's incredible so well i think you're nailing it on the head though because i said this word earlier in the podcast because it kind of relates to everything you're you're talking about with your story but it's all it's all karma man i mean like if you don't go out there just holding your hand out and asking people to give you shit you know and and you just go about your business and you do something good yeah. and and especially when you do it for a long time and you know you, again you're not just tit for tatting stuff it adds up, and people will say, "Well, oh, then you're just long gaming it for it to add up." No, you put good shit out into the universe. You put good positive vibes out there. You do the right thing by people, and yes, eventually the universe will reward you a little bit for yourself. But like, even in rewarding you, it's it's like you built a huge company that's now in whatever it is, 17 states. And don't you have a plant down south now too? Yeah, we're in Atlanta. It's uh. <laughs> How big's that place? It's very small. Well, it's small compared to New Jersey, but <laughs> it's been it's like kind of unbelievable, right? Yeah. Like I can't even believe it myself. But you see, like now you're taking even yeah. with all this, it's like, yes, a lot of great things are happening for you, sure. But it's you're adding a lot of responsibility. It's what mm -hmm. you gotta do. You and I were talking about yeah. this a little bit before we got on camera. It's like you start this in Paul's fucking parents' kitchen yeah. and now you gotta run this in at least highly regional almost heading national we're at, yeah yeah we're trying to go national but like i don't want to freeze my food man so like well how do you do it now like what what is what is the chain of like let's say i live in like the further th the furthest i can go is two-day ground so like okay. our bread and butter are our refrigerated van deliveries and that is just superior like I have the equipment now. We map sealed the meals. The shelf life's extended. The freshness is insane. Nothing beats the refrigerated van experience. And when I was building this company, I always wanted like, there's two things that technology can never stop, right? Like technology can advance. You have all this fucking, you have all these computers. You have all this cool shit here. Eating and fucking are two things technology <laughs> can't replace. <laughs> I'm being serious. And when you think uh, about eating, <clears throat> you bring it back to the milkman, old school milkman. Yep. I wanted to create an online restaurant where your waiter, who is your driver, shows up to your house, delivers your food, and follows up with you. And you get this boutique experience. And I don't think people ever realize how big Eat Clean Bro is because I'm, I'm a humble dude. I keep it low key. But also because of the boutique experience you get when you're an Eat Clean Bro customer. I just don't think people can constantly, like, there's just, there's no, like, when you call the office, there's no, like, oh, press one for this, press two for, mm. like, listen, dude, if you're calling my office, you're fucking, you're pissed off, you want to talk to somebody. Yes. I'm not going to wait, like, 
you're not fucking calling to be put on hold. I want to get you in touch with somebody immediately. The boutique feel with the driver, you get you get like this. Um, so you're get, sending your own trucks out there. Yes. Yep. Damn. Oh yeah, I know, man. It's scary. That's a lot. I'm just thinking about the overhead here to do this. It's very cool you're doing this, but yeah, it's a couple million a year. It's that like even seems low. Four million. That even seems low. Like you saying that. I'm just thinking about because all these people, these you're delivering food at least like once a week for them, right? Four times a week, yeah. Oh shit! You deliver by the day. Um, no, I mean you. People can get their meals. Like you can get ten, twelve, twenty, however many meals you want. The, th the one of the things that made E Clean Bro, uh, one of the things that made E Clean Bro a fucking legend. Like I, I pioneered a space. Like you could buy, like E Clean Bro. I think was the first to market with like meal prep the way it is today. When I was cooking for my friends. I would let them order whatever they wanted and I would just give them my best price, which I think at the time was like eight fifty or seven fifty or something like that. And then for strangers, I'd be like, all right, you gotta buy twenty meals, blah, blah, blah. Like had all these like credits and shit. And then I learned that like people would buy the twenty meals and then like they would get down to their last few meals and then like their orders would start off big and they would just get like smaller and smaller because they didn't want to like re up on the fucking on like the credits. Right. So like my big aha moment, which is funny because I don't know why anybody wouldn't just do this from day one, but like I was the first one to just offer healthy food, no contracts, no minimum. Uh, like everybody else was a subscription. You need to buy five fucking five days, three meals a day, two snacks for fucking six months, or you can mm. get seven meals a, like seven days a week. And like there was all these programs and I had been a personal trainer and I had been bodybuilding and I had knew dieting for so long. Like, I'm like, look, dude, I know what the fuck people want and I know what, I know what they need. So, you know, just started, started making these, these meals that like help people live a healthy lifestyle, help them lose weight, whatever. And, uh, once I got rid of, once I created the infrastructure, which like took me nearly a year to figure out. That was like, I was off to the races. And then once all the celebrity endorsements started happening, it was just like, doo -doo 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 -doo. like mm. it was fucking out. And I was just playing catch up ever since. How long before you're doing, like, because at the beginning, obviously, it's more localized. Like, you don't have trucks at the very beginning, so you're delivering it all yourself. Yeah. When did you start with the milkman idea? Like, I'm going to get my own trucks. One of the things, I've always worked in restaurants. I've always been around chefs. And, like, this has been something I've been trying to do for a very long time. And, like always been talking about like the superior method of handling is refrigerated van i've been talking about this for a very long time and when i finally got to do it it was like yes like perfection i am i am building the fucking pyramids there's like obviously ways like there's you know it was like it was like my search for perfection because leading up to my success were like many years of humiliation you know it was like very humiliating time so, yeah, I love having the vans, knowing that they're driving around, wrapped, E-Clean Bro, billboards, E-Clean Bro. Like, you go into New Jersey, all you see is E-Clean Bro, and it's just, like, satisfying. And it's satisfying to know that it's a superior method of handling for the customers and that they're getting, like, the superior method. Um, it's just so fast. That's what, like, I've always tried to, be, like, I always tried to be faster than Amazon. That was, like, my thing. Like, <laughs> I want to be faster than Amazon. And... And when it comes to like fully cooked, prepared meals, I am. I'm like trying to become, trying to do that on a national scale. That's where like things get botched because it's just got to be frozen at that point. But I don't want to do frozen. So you're going to have to get other warehouses. Yeah. Find partners, raise money. Who knows? It's just, you know, fully self funded all these years. It's still 100% owner. I think that's why like, it's an incredible story. Are you public <clears throat> about some of your like revenues and stuff like that? Or is yeah, that we're at like twenty two million this year? Well Damn. we should finish the year. So That's awesome, man. And For, how yeah. how many clients do you have ballpark? Like four thousand a week, something along those lines. Four thousand a week. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's good considering all the hiccups I've had over the years. I had a tech company who was leaking my audiences out to all my competition. I've had like 
I've had so much bad shit happen to me that should have like knocked me off the horse, but like my product speaks for itself. Eclean yeah. Bro is the industry leader in all aspects of service and product. And that's just because I won't bend. Well, what about the quality on the back end too? Like we keep on hearing about, it's been big over the past probably six, seven, eight months. It feels like the emphasis on like seed oils and how food's prepared and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I, I assume you do like more of the organic approach. You're not using stuff like that. From day one, I have only ever used extra virgin olive oil. Oh, we love that. So day one. That's awesome. And listen, I'm a business owner. I'm not a big fan of Bernie Sanders. But I'll tell you this. <laughs> that dude has been the same fucking dude for like the last 60 years. Yes. And that's me. So if there's one thing I have in common with Bernie Sanders, it's like I have not fucking bent my beliefs in all this time with all this money with all of this everything, I was supposed to get a deal. Was it Mario Batali got in a bunch of trouble and he got canceled? Yeah, yeah. So I was in Ohio at a warehouse and I was going to pick up his like sauce. I was going to be like, oh, it was such a big deal. It would have made me so much money. But I, like, I was like, no, dude, I can't do it. The ingredients, like, why can't you just pull these ingredients? Like there was these fucking ingredients that were no good. And I had to like not do the deal. Good yeah. for you. What am I gonna do, bro? Make a make a million or two dollars off a deal that's gonna like tarnish my fucking name? Don't <laughs> compromise, man. I can't. Can never compromise, and it's annoying. It's like annoying, but it's what makes me a gangster. So it's like, <laughs> I'm like I got I gotta just keep going. Do you think like I don't know? I try not to think about the things I can't control all of. You know, in the world, like you, you can't control the fact that you gotta go to the food store. You gotta you gotta buy stuff there. You can pick out what you do but there's going to be something in something you know what i mean but like i feel like i've seen a lot more doomsday talk about what we put in our bodies over the past year or two you know where they're talking about what's in the water that we get out of the sink or even the filtered water they're talking about the seed oils like i already brought up You're, they're talking about all these things like do you think they're do you subscribe to any of the conspiracies that like oh they're just putting shit in our shit on purpose in 2013, when I started E Clean Bro, child molester Jared was hustling weight loss sandwiches and McDonald's was sponsoring the Olympics. And now people want to know if I take food stamps and if my salmon is wild caught. That's the same person, right? So like, here's the deal. My uncle, Right. My aunt, unfortunately, had like bone cancer. She died immediately. My mm. uncle's health was in the toilet. He was eating like a regular American lunch, white bread, ham, cheese, mustard sandwich. He started getting some salmon, and some rice. I started feeding him because my aunt died and I knew like, you know, I wanted to help him out. His health did a total 180. The doctors were fucking blown away. My uncle's in the best shape of his life. And I know E Clean Bro is legit as fuck. And if it wasn't, I would have gotten, at this point, I've been around for so long. At some point, somebody would be trying to fucking kill me, right? Yeah. All of my ingredients are clearly labeled. There was like Quest or one of those big companies were saying their shit was sugar free. And like, dude, look, you can make some sugar free, some sugar free shit taste all right, but like, you know. There's like a line, right? Like you're giving up something if it's sugar-free. And they got in a lot of trouble because it wasn't sugar-free. I think it was Quest. Oh, I love Quest. I love Quest too. And Fuck I, a Quest so heavy. Yeah, they're great. They're great. But like all the nutritional claims, like I have a registered dietitian in-house, quality control. We're constantly monitoring. We're constantly monitoring the ingredients and the calories we were like the first food company to get um, approved by the American Heart Association. Mm. That was scrutinous, man. That was a fucking... Bro, it's How do you even go about doing that? We had a friend in there and it took a lot of years and finally we got approved. But they were such a weird company. Um, all they wanted was money. And that's like another thing. Like, I don't care how famous you are, dude. If I think like you're a fucking bag of shit, like I don't fuck with you. So... The American Heart Association was just like the money grab. 
they didn't they wouldn't let us like put their logo on anything i was going to put the american heart association on like all my billboards and it was just like it was just a weird interaction that sucks it was a lot of years of diligence and testing and back and forth we got approved it worked yeah like the salt and everything so i tell people this about eclean bro too it's like salt is a big thing when you're eating the meal dude you're going to remember the protein <clears throat> Another thing too, right? Back to my Uncle Tom with a sandwich. When you take two slices of bread, a slice of cheese, a couple of slices of ham and mustard, if you break down all those ingredients, there is so much salt compounding on salt, right? Ham, yeah, right? A lot. The bread, there's a ton of fucking salt in bread, a ton of salt and mustard. When you take like a regular E-Clean Bro meal, you're going to have like some rice or some potatoes. And you're going to have a vegetable. We're serving those vegetables blanched. So like right off the bat, if you're breaking a percentage of the meal down, 30 something percent of that meal is like salt free. So right off the bat, like less salt. Mm. The rice, less salt. And then the protein, reasonably seasoned. It's still a little under seasoned compared to a restaurant, but for like everyday meal you're eating. <clears throat> Dude, I've been doing this a long time. I eat my food all the time, man. The E-Clean Bro meal is fucking good. It's enjoyable to eat. <laughs> I, don't, like, I, don't, I don't know what else to say, man. Like I have, this has just been a, a fucking psychotic obsession of mine over the last 20 fucking years. Just nailing it down. The subtlety of the rice. Even still, dude, side by side comparisons of rice. Do you know how much fucking time I've spent with rice? I'm like a <laughs> fucking doctor of rice, dude. It's fucking ridiculous. No, nah, it's clear you take you take incredible pride not just in your company but in what goes into it. You know, I when when I talk to people who started something or have preferably have had something for a long time, it's very easy to tell right away if it's business oriented or it's personal. I like to see a mix of both, you know, cuz you have to be able to run a business, right? And you you got to mix, but it's personally you. Like that's where it really comes across because it, it's born out of scratching your own itch, but you also, you know, you never, as you said, you never changed on your principles. And I would say you were actually like ahead of the curve with a lot of these things because you're making fresh food. You care about the freshness being from manufacturer all the way to someone's doorstep, right? Yeah. I want the refrigerated trucks. I don't want that shit, you know, frozen, mm -hmm. you know, that that kind of detail as time goes on and information continues and people get more and more educated about what they're putting in their body and stuff is maybe I'm trying to do right now. I'm sure a lot of people out there listening are, that's the kind of stuff that's going to, that's going to continue to set you apart even more. Yeah. And now they're doing all like studies too. So like they're just, they're showing that like reheated rice, reheated potatoes or a superior method of like carb intake. It's like, dude, Really? Yeah. I've always stayed the far far the fuck back because <clears throat> you – here's the thing, dude. During COVID, everybody was like, follow the science, the science, the science. You, with enough money <clears> – did you hear what I just said? With enough money? <laughs> with enough money, you can prove or disprove whatever the fuck you want using science. Mm. Science is important, dude. I'm – I'm absolutely not denying that science isn't important. It very much is. But you have to use some science. You have to read between the lines. If fucking science says due to your like caloric intake, you could have a couple like you could have like two protein shakes and 13 fucking pop tarts. And like that's all you get to eat per week. Like you got to use some fucking like, listen, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'm hitting my macronutrients. But like, come on. You yeah. can't fucking eat pop tarts and drink protein shakes all week. Like that is a yeah. bad idea. And then there's fucking jerk offs on the internet, like all these fitness influencers who, they're they're. When you got like beauty care products and like skin care products, they're selling a fucking dream that doesn't exist. Yeah. And most of these fitness influencers, right? Everything has gotten so saturated, mm -hmm. and everyone's trying to carve out their mark. I'm like, fuck it, dude. Been there done that let these fucking lunatics eat each other alive i'm out yeah and the same thing back in the day bro my dad right old school italian guy my dad would be like <clears throat> what type of uh, like what type of credentials like 
well, what, what kind of nutrition credentials do you have? He's like, why are anybody, why is anybody going to trust you? I go, dad, I am selling grilled fucking chicken, brown rice and brown and, and broccoli. I said, if the guy selling a fucking McDonald's cheeseburger <laughs> doesn't have nutritional credentials, I said, I know every fucking ingredient I'm using. Does anyone who work in McDonald's know every ingredient they're using? No fucking way. Mm-mm. No way. I said, I don't need nu- nutrition credentials. Like I fucking walk the walk. But you're also keeping it simple and you're not hawking other people's stuff as well. Like you mentioned the fitness influencers, man. The first marketing I did was in that for someone else who my, my buddy Khan, who was a great guy and knew his shit and was actually going about it the right way. When I did that, though, I had to watch this back in like. 2016 2017 on instagram watch all these other fitness influencers and what they do and the amount of fucking griftership and people who just you know maybe they're on the juice and they aesthetically look good great you know they're all on the juice but like they aesthetically look great and then half the shit they're saying it's like well wait a minute that's not right or you you know people are selling people their look yeah now my, my one friend gave a quote the other day he's like and it was a little bit of a generalization, but I would apply this to a lot of the fitness influencers I saw. It's like, if you're selling just your body and nothing in your mind, then you're saying that that is the priority or something like that. It was like, you're saying that's all you have to yeah. offer. And I felt like that's what a lot of that industry was and continues <clears throat> to be. And I find myself now, like when I go to look for workouts and that's like the most common thing I'll yeah. do, I'll just fucking go to Twitter mm-hmm. or like go to Instagram and just search, you know, like arm day or something like that. You know, I'll find myself questioning, like, all right, this person looks good, but, like, what the fuck are they doing here? Is this, should I yeah. be doing this? You know what I mean? Just hit it, man. Just do the workouts. I – one of one of my, like, fitness pet peeves would be, like, some, like, 20-year-old, right? So oh, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, yeah, of course you look good. Every, <laughs> everyone looks good when they're 20 years old, dude. Yeah. Have a couple kids. Start a business. Get some employees. <laughs> just watch your life go down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got you got a couple kids now, right? You're saying at the beginning? Yeah. And I'm at the doctor and I'm on TRT. And that's the only reason I look halfway decent. <laughs> Otherwise I'd be a fat fuck fucking blob who wouldn't even be on this podcast. I'd be so fucking tired I couldn't talk. What what goes into the TRT? Like how does that work? <laughs> Dude. And tell people out there what that is who don't know. All right. So it's testosterone replacement therapy. I go to Elevate Wellness in Parsippany. I get my blood work done. So like, I don't want to say I beat the system, <laughs> but I went at like the worst time in my life. Where So my son um, used to sleep in our bed and we couldn't get him to sleep any other way and it was like we knew we shouldn't have done it but like it was it was fucking life or death for us <laughs> so for two years i did not get to sleep for two years oh. it was horrible i love my son and the time we spent together um he's a daddy's boy and i believe because like i'm heavier than my wife he would just always flop over to onto me <laughs> so like <laughs> for like two years his little ass was just stuck to my side and um and I, and I think that's what really gave us like our, our special bond, you know, cause like he would just always like nighttime was just always, you know, daddy. And, um, but like, dude, he was, he was fucking killed me, dude. I just didn't sleep. So I knew, <clears throat> I knew my testosterone was in the toilet. So I'm like, yo, now is the time they get my blood work done. Mm. And like my shit was low, dude. It was like 200 or something. So I got a testosterone prescription immediately and, uh. Yeah, started helping, and it's fucking great. I'm on, like, all, all the fucking, all the stuff everybody's doing. So the testosterone, the aminos, the uh, the CJC, the BPC for healing. CJC? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a growth peptide. It just helps with some of your, your growth hormone. So it's fucking awesome. Helps you sleep. I'm finding, dude, the older I get, and not that I'm old yet, but, like, fucking everything hurts. Um, sleep, man. Yeah. It all starts with sleep and it all falls apart at sleep. So like, um, I don't know if we were recording when I talked about, I did construction during COVID. I got eaten alive, but I, I, the quality sleep you get, God, you know what, dude, I'm probably not even qualified to talk, but like, if you're fucking listening, 
pay attention to your sleep, your caffeine intake, you know, the, the sleep you're getting. It's like, that is the fucking beginning of like what you'll be physically and mentally capable of. You're not going to go far without like to correct sleep. So like I am a maniac with recovery. I'm in the sauna five mm. days a week. And I feel like it's not talked about, but like I do feel like the sauna helps metabolize caffeine because I find that at the times I do the sauna, I just way more restful sleep and uh, just way less anxiety. I'm big with um, – because at this point, dude, I have so many employees. I have so many people working for me. How many do you have? Um, Ballpark. Like 125, 125. It's not that many, I guess. It's pretty big, man. It's a lot of mouths to feed. <clears throat> yeah. So it's really my job to be calm, um, be calm, lead, direct. So like really my mental state and like my vibe, I, I don't know how else to put it, but like I want to be like a good vibe, you know? I feel like people want to work for somebody who's a good vibe, um, try to be a good vibe, try to spread positivity. My company core values, um, positivity, respect, integrity, commitment, and excellence. So it's called the price, right? Pay the price. Are you paying the price? And we try to push the price. So, and it all starts with me. So the company core values is my language and I have to show up and, and live those values every day, which I do naturally, but like sleeping, man, big time. Yeah. You need to sleep, dude. My son not sleeping for those two years, it was taxing. Yeah. It's, you know, especially like you understand you've been at this for 11 years building a, a company, but <clears throat> You know, building this thing over the past three and a half years, there are so many little things in my health that have disintegrated. Oh, yeah. Right? And it's okay. You're at the point now where it, it's okay if it does. You're sacrificing your health. But the thing is, the short like, term. Right. Once you get to like this eight year mark, who knows? No good. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're going to come to a point where you reach your breaking point and you're, you're probably not there yet, which is good and just keep going. Once you get to that point where you're like, dude, I can't fucking live like this any longer, then you just take a step back and start like prioritizing your health. And some people may like, see a lot of times people give advice. They haven't fucking walked the walk. Yeah. You know what I mean? That yeah. has just gotten too fucking common, right? Like we have gotten too comfortable giving advice in areas we're not fucking qualified to. So I feel like when it comes to starting something for nothing, I'm qualified to give that. Fucking oh, you advice. definitely are. So for sure. So yeah, dude, fuck it. You only, yo, listen, man, you only live once, you'll be fine. Fucking work as hard as you can. And when your body says that's enough, like I was, I was getting like these horrible ulcers. I mean, like I had gained so much weight. I had gotten so fucked up. I was in like physical pain all the time in my stomach, dude. I don't know what the fuck happened, but you your body stress. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, it, it was just like horrible, like ulcer pain. Your body will tell you when you've had enough. Your stress, your anxiety, all that shit. It'll it will tell you. Like last year, um, like I had just gotten into my new building, all of my equipment was breaking, and then like half my staff quit because like there was a nineteen new nineteen minute commute, which was like stupid, whatever. They held me hostage. I had to give everybody like an extra four dollars a, a day or something. I know, I know, I know. I'm like, guys, really? You fucking did this to me for four fucking dollars? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, <clears throat> bro, I ended up in the fucking hospital. Mm. I was getting like this horrible, um, thought I was dying. The problem with heart attacks is that like anxiety attacks and heart attacks have almost identical yes. symptoms. So, <laughs> so I'll never forget that. Like, it's the 4th of July. I'm hearing fireworks go off. I'm in the hospital. I'm watching Spider-Man. I'm fucking pinned up, all these fucking IVs and monitors all over my body. And I'm just thinking, wow, dude, maybe it's time to bring in an investor. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe it's time to bring on a partner. Um, but I'm like, man, fuck this. Like in 2012, when I really started learning about like the fast food industry and like what those people were doing to you know, low income neighborhoods. I was mm -hmm. like, I got to do something. Yeah. I got to do something. So like, I feel like I'm like the fucking William Wallace of, <laughs> of healthy food, you know, you look like, like him too. <laughs> unless I'm on that fucking, unless I'm on that board getting fucking tortured, I'm not giving up, you know, freedom. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, I'm going out on my shield, baby. I'm not ever going to fucking give up. The only way I'm leaving is if I'm dead. So 
yeah, it turned out, man, I, I wasn't having, like my EKG was good and I, I, I had a, just anxiety. Yeah. It's, you know what? I've heard a lot of stories like that. People end up in the ER and there's, there's several things that weirdly mimic a heart attack. Like I was in the ER three years ago <clears throat> with what I then figured was an anxiety attack, but it was actually like an eosinophilic eosinophilic asthma attack oh shit because like it'll there's something about like the left arm will go oh will no go a little cold oh, and god. shit i thought i was having a heart attack fuck yeah that and left like, arm oh, my goes god. oh my god yeah oh, but man. there's like several things that'll yeah. do it and then it's the it's the most out of control feeling yeah like you it's like your body's attacking you i guess that's why they call it a heart attack it's just the weirdest weirdest thing so uncomfortable but i think about it a lot mm -hmm. with stress as well because i never had like a ton of stress with things i could just kind of get shit done and i also never built something on my own yeah. that was i was on my sword to do it so i don't think i put myself in enough situations to feel it so then as this started to move along and i started to feel it like i find myself thinking about that all the time i've never had a panic attack or anything like that, but I don't think I'm impervious to mm. something like that. Like I want, like I'll ask myself sometimes when I'm feeling certain aches and pains because I've been dealing with some other health problems too. But I'll ask myself like, "Ah, oh, is that is that from that, or is yeah. that just because I'm like the last two days have been insane?" You know, it's it's a yeah. weird thing to think about. I know, I know. And you're like, dude, I have limits. I am a human. I yeah. have to breathe. I have to work out. So that's why, like, I have um. So every morning I work out, my buddy comes over, we work out, we hit the sauna. I do that five days a week in the morning. You have a gym at your house? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I splurged. I got like the matrix equipment. I have all the assault cardio. I have like a fucking badass gym at my house, but I use it every day. Um, I knew if I got residential equipment, I'd never fucking use it. So I got like the real shit. Like, oh yeah. Like, you yeah. know, like you go to like yeah. a home gym and there's yes. like that shitty equipment Yes. And I was like, bro, if I get shitty gym equipment, I'm never going to use it. So I got like the real shit. Like I got the matrix set up. I got, I got, I got, I got nice shit in my you house. You got a bench and a rack and everything? Fuck yeah, dude. Let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, looking at you, I hope you do. Yeah. Christ. <laughs> yeah, no. I love it, dude. Yeah, I have a great gym. Um, Like I got the sauna, the steamer. How the, big's your sauna? You fit like fucking six people in it. That's pretty good. Yeah. Is that in your basement? Yeah. Yeah, I fucking love it. I used to go to the Banya. <clears throat> like the Turkish bath? Uh, the Russian bathhouse, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a cool place, but during COVID, we would sneak in. The owner would always let us in during the lockdown, and some fucking dude coughed, and he fucking got me in the back of the neck. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> you know, during the COVID lockdown, that was when, like, coughing was worse than farting. Yeah. Like, you'd be better off <laughs> ripping ass than coughing at that point. And I'm like, dude, are you fucking, like... I, ne I was never like a mask guy. I was never scared of COVID. I got like COVID three times. I didn't care. But like, dude, you just fucking coughed on my <laughs> neck. Um, and I, and I, you know, maybe that's why I'm growing out this mullet. So I never get coughed on my neck. Again, but, <laughs> like, I don't know, dude. The neck was just like, I don't know, bro. It was just like a, it was like a, like, that was like a no fly zone for me, man. And um, I said, fuck this. I'm building one of these things at my house. So. Oh, dude, it's the best. I use it every day. Yeah, I want I want one of those for sure. It's like amazing. that's something. If I had some money, that's one of the things I'd spend it on, dude. And like another thing, like you can get a fucking sauna sleeping bag for like two hundred bucks. It's just as good. A sauna sleeping bag. Well, that's not what they're called, but like that's basically what it is. Where like you just fucking plug up, you put the bag up into your fucking neck, and it's probably more comfortable than a than a real sauna because your fucking head gets hot as fuck. What is but um like? yeah dude you don't need like you could get one now dude that's Sauna what i would do sleeping but i've yeah, never like, heard of this so i got my friends in the city they got like fucking studio apartments they're like i don't have room for it i'm like bro just get the fucking sleeping bag this thing behind you what that guy's got yeah bro those fucking things crank i'll stick this in the corner of the screen holy shit oh, all right you can probably get a fucking probably uh yeah, one's three ninety nine. You could probably find a coupon. Look, there's ten percent off, dude. Now you just save thirty nine. <laughs> Keep going, bro. Fucking log off and let their drip campaign get you for another forty percent off in like six weeks. Yeah, let's see. There you go. Put all your information in the shopping cart and then log off and then wait. 
wait for their drip campaign. Dude, how about they're gonna be thirsty? How about these? They're gonna things, want you. It's getting creepier now. Oh. Like how things follow you around. But that, yeah, and that's why, like, like what do you clean, bro? It's so funny, dude, because people are so paranoid to put their zip code. Like, yeah. uh, there's a zip, so uh, when you go to ecleanbro.com, there's a zip code authorizer, and and the reason that is is because like there's certain parts of the country we don't service. So if you're in Wisconsin and you're on ecleanbro.com and like you're fucking, you're I don't want to waste fucking 15 minutes of your life going through my menu, going and like I can't fucking get you. Right. So like put in your fucking zip code, and you will immediately know yes or no. What by the way, just real quick, what states are you in right now? Jesus, dude, I fucking. There's I 17, but no, there's more now. I don't. Oh, even you have know. more now. <clears throat> do you I have don't the, know. Do you have the whole eastern seaboard covered? We can get out into Chicago, South Carolina, Alabama. It's it's a lot. Do you I, do I, Florida? Yeah. We're we're not in Florida yet. We're we're trying to really sort out. So like, summer is here. We're trying to sort out. Like, the temperature is definitely against us. You know, because mm. we're not frozen. So like, we're trying to sort it out. I'm probably going to disable some of the the territories. So like, that's why I'm not really. I'm probably until we could like. We're gonna. We're gonna level up our box, our liner, our ice packs, and then like, then we'll probably start rolling out into those warmer areas. So like, Texas and Florida has been like, I'm fucking dying to get to those states, but like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like half-ass the launch, you know? Right. E Clean Bro is has like a fucking reputation to live up to, and like, I don't want people being, you know. I want people to have it and be like, oh, this is the reason these motherfuckers have been around for so long, like. These are the guys. These are the guys to beat, which we are. I mean, food wise, nobody nobody comes close. So, what what you keep on talking about during COVID though? You were constructing something. Was yeah. that your warehouse in Eatontown? Yeah. So we built a brand new, you know, brand new kitchen, tons of refrigerated space, and uh, I built like my dream facility. Like the flow is just, the flow is just epic. So like the way the the way the employees and everything flows, the way the food comes in and out. It's really cool. It's one way in, one way out, you know, really trying to eliminate the possibility of cross-contamination. So like food comes in the kitchen raw, it goes into a separate walk-in box fully cooked, it gets manufactured, it goes into order fulfillment, and then it's out. Mm. Nothing's like, you know, when you're working a restaurant, you're utilizing raw and cooked stuff back and forth in most areas, in most cases, simply because like, just how most restaurants, pretty much all restaurants are. Not that anybody should be scared to go to a fucking restaurant, but like, I'm dealing with like millions of meals a year. Yeah, yeah. And you do anything a couple million times, like you're bound, like something's bound. Yeah, to I mean, happen, I just so. think about with stuff like this, especially since you're not doing it frozen like the amount of little things that can go wrong you know someone gets sick or gets food poisoning it's something's um, not fresh it, it, they well, sue the thing is man um like i said bro positivity so like one of the things i'm most proud of at eclean bro is that like the staff all eats the food when you go to the eclean bro That's facility good. the break room is filled with staff eating the meals and that's just it's just it's just always a relief because like everybody, not that like anybody's policing themselves, but like everybody's on top of the food. It's a chef run company. I mean, that's like the culture I've created. We're not like tracking the fucking retention rate. It's like, dude, how juicy was the chicken this week? Well, how many chefs do you keep like in that Eaton Town location in the factory? Like how many, how many chefs do you have working at one time? It's a team. I don't know. My director of production is like, you know, he has his rosters and, but I have like a, I have like a solid group of guys, dude. The people that cook are fucking good. That's great. Yeah. Have you ever done like, you mentioned like Mario Batali or something, but do you ever have like connects to like celebrity chefs who may want to add things in the future to like your menu, do something special that's, that yeah. they created or? I would love that, man. Um, I would love that. You meet any cool ones? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not I'd love one. to meet. I'd love to meet Bobby Flay, just because he's the fucking man. Yeah. But uh, he's got a lot of restaurants now. 
Dude, his fucking spot in Borgata was the best, dude. Fucking went down during COVID. I'm so pissed. Wait, what? Yeah. That's gone? It's gone. No, it's not. Dude, that fucking... No! God, those stuffed clams, all that fucking calamari, Jesus. That restaurant's... Oh, oh, you just ruined my day. Dude, I'm sorry. That was right next to Premier. It it was very good, man. It was fucking great. My oh. buddy Nico's dad had an unofficial drink there called the Spiro that wasn't on the menu. It was uh-huh. fucking fire. Yeah. It, it was a oh. great place. It was a great place. It was a great restaurant. There's like a new steakhouse in there. I mean, the steakhouse that's in there just now is not bad, but Bobby's was fucking killer. Dude, dude. I'd I always didn't get know that, that. Always get that three pound lobster, dunk it in the butter, baby. Then I'll fucking drip the butter on the mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats fucking lobster, butter, and mashed potatoes, dude. It's just like up there with some of the fucking best. Yeah, actually, on that though, you keep on talking about seafood. Like, that's the one thing. Mm-hmm. Like, that's so easy to go bad or fucking smell everything up. Like, how are you making uh, we do shrimp seafood? We do shrimp and we do salmon. And the, sa- the everybody's shrimp comes in frozen. So, like, shrimp's pretty easy. And then the salmon, dude, is uh, everything's to order, to order. So, like, um, running, running like an e clean bro inventory is relatively easy because it's it's just it's just coming in, it's coming out. We don't have to sit on on that much inventory. We know what the orders are. We're pretty good with projecting what we need. Restaurants, man, it's like it's like hit or miss, dude. Like the e clean bro, like the ordering for e clean bro is pretty pretty steady, surprisingly. Although, like, we're not a subscription. Like, it pretty much people come back. The same people come back every week. It's pretty pretty easy to order. Well, that's a, yeah. I'm surprised you don't do the subscription thing. We're but working that's, on that's the impressive. function. Yeah, we're working on the function just because my my whole philosophy was let my let my product be the subscription. Let my mm. quality and my food be my contract. I want you to come back. I want you to want e clean, bro. I don't want you to fucking be like, I can't unsubscribe to eClean, bro. You motherfucker, one star. Like, we're very good. We always, people, someone's upset with something, dude. We give you your money back right away. And that, I feel like, I think like the hostile internet, like people who are hostile on the internet are people who feel like they've been taken advantage of and they've Mm -hmm. gotten robbed. And that's when people go hostile. That's when they go fucking crazy. Um, I've gotten some bad one star reviews, but they were all fake from like a competitor in like 2015 which was annoying but just try to do right by people dude if i take your money and you fucking hate what i've done i will give you your money back sorry it's also wild like <clears throat> been dealing with contractors who are like doing construction and dealing with contractors dude like they're just most of them are the scum of the earth and you just yeah. start to fucking hate them and like yeah. i got this bad review somebody was like we didn't like the seasoning on the chicken and i'm just thinking like if this was a construction job okay <laughs> you went on ecleanbro.com you ordered a chipotle chicken a chipotle chicken showed up everything about what you paid for happened you just happened not to like it all right i didn't miss a deadline i didn't take your money and not show up i didn't like delay your life like and you didn't like it and we gave you your money back and it's just funny because You'll do like construction jobs and like they'll fucking not listen. They'll hold up your life. They won't read the plans. They'll fucking fail inspection. And you're just like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> like if I treated my customers like this, somebody would beat my ass to death or light me on fire or kill my children. I don't know why that business is fi- <laughs> like it's filled with that though. It's filled with like the most degenerate fucking yeah, degenerate, people who ever lived. corrupt like all these like yeah y- you constantly hear about like someone redid something in their house and like they're fighting over 10 grand or yeah. 15 grand because the guy never did this you, or, like he didn't say no, like, like what the fuck man you just have to be that type of person to be in that industry like me i don't know i could never do it no i don't think so i could never like leave a job half done just move on <laughs> <laughs> like like dude it's ridiculous uh, so actually you just reminded me i'm in the middle of a lawsuit with some dirtbag who's probably going to be at manalapan day and i'm going to be selling barbecue sandwiches there what a contractor yeah of course fucking loser was it over your business or your home yeah yeah oh so dude there's some things you can't fuck with 
and mostly it's everything in New Jersey. But one thing you can't fuck with is the ADA compliance, which is like the height of a sink, wheelchair ramps, the mm. pitch of a wheelchair yeah. ramp, yeah. handicap accessibility, parking spots. And this fucking guy was just like ignoring the pitch. He was trying to like make it work. And like, essentially, dude, they come in with a fucking meter and they measure the pitch. And the pitch needed to be done within 23 feet. He was trying to make it happen in 17. Wait, the pit, what was the pit? So like, uh, like the pitch of a ramp oh, for like a wheelchair. It, got it, got it. And dude, we like failed an inspection like three times. And when that happens, the town starts to fucking hate you, yeah. right? So like they have to come out to a job three times and it's wrong three times. <laughs> they don't want to come back out to your job. And what happens is delays start occurring. Now you're paying for all this shit and you're just getting delayed more and more and more and more. And then like, I guess like at the end of the day, the lawsuit was just really about like, he left without finishing the job. He's trying to get paid in full. And like, he didn't deliver on a bunch of shit. And now we're like, listen, asshole, your fucking painter, I have like $150,000 hiboxy floor. His painter came in to like paint doors, got like white paint all over my blue shit, my blue flake. Oh, just, that's nice. Just like, and you know what, man? I let a lot of that shit slide. But like, I felt like, dude, you had you had caused so many damages by not reading the plans. But like, you didn't finish the job. Like, we're even, motherfucker. Like, you're looking for fucking ten grand or something. Like, dude, you caused me probably like a quarter million in damages with just negligence on not reading the plans. Like, you know, it's like a dog fight. Whatever. Brutal. It's the, fine. This is the stuff, though. Like, it. But adds the thing up. is, this is what adds up. The problem is, it's going to go to his insurance. He'll probably, whatever, maybe I'll get like 40000 He'll dilute his LLC. He'll start a new one and he'll just keep back to doing his dirty fucking yeah, shit. Yeah, that's what and that's do. just what they do. Yeah. And it's like, damn. And I don't even want to go through with this, but I'm not paying him 10 grand. Like, dude, you, I'm not, I'm not paying you, dude. So that's such a shitty number though, too. Cause when it's like in those ballparks, it's like, how much are you going to spend on legal just to fight these fucking guys? I have them on you retainer, know? so I'm fighting them anyway. I got some yeah, fucking dickhead. I had a Mercedes, right? All my vans were Mercedes. We got into a, a little- You got Mercedes Mercedes vans, Rose. yeah, of course, baby. You Come do on. everything we're top rolling. right. Dude, I know Love I do. It. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this dude's van wipes out, or whatever. His car wipes out into a snowbank. We wipe out. We kiss his car. We're like, all right, dude, this is how it works. Like, we hit you last. It's our fault. Like, his car was totaled because he hit a fucking snowbank. Mm. His car wasn't totaled because E Clean Bro's van that had $200 worth of damage hit his car. Okay. Mm. He had hit a snowbank first that totaled his car. Behind him, we kissed his car. $200 was like cool kid was acting cool everybody was acting cool so we're like all right listen dude we'll give you five grand get your like it was an old piece of shit car i needed a new car anyway so like here's five grand put it down towards a new car blah 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 congratulations you just got like a free down payment on a new car thought that was like going above and beyond for the fucking guy yeah i thought that was pretty fucking cool never enough right yeah because had we gone through insurance blah 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 like i didn't want the headache I had done two hundred dollars worth of damage. I was doing good. I had five grand to give him. Let's move on. Whatever. A couple of months go by, we get a fucking letter. We're being fucking sued for pain and suffering. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude. So first thing I do is I get a private investigator because like that's the first thing I do. Like when you sue me, and like put it this way, if I if I hurt you or if I did wrong by you, I want to make it right. But if you're a fraudulent piece of shit, I'm going to nail you to the wall. Right. Like I just am. Like employees, fucking nail them all. I actually felt bad, dude. I, I fucking got this guy. He was trying to say he got hurt on the, got hurt at the work, got hurt at work. The first day the private investigator's there, dude, he's like shoveling snow. He was all decked out and he clean, bro. I felt bad about that part. <laughs> but, you know, he, like, dude, what is wrong with people? The people, I, I don't know what it is because- Luckily, like it's never something I've thought, but the older I get, the more I realize just how many people will look to capitalize like yeah. when they can. So, 
So he ended up not yeah. getting his workers' comp claim. And, and then the kid who sued me for pain and suffering, which like, if everybody's listening, like, I need everyone listening to imagine what $200 of damage looks like on a Mercedes vehicle. It's a I, dink. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I didn't know you could even bring a Mercedes to work for two hundred dollars. I didn't. I didn't know I could be billed so low. So anyway, he ended up getting like a fucking settlement, and we're paying him like seventy five hundred bucks. But I'm gonna pay. I'm dragging it out over like three years. So really, it wasn't about the kid who's a fucking loser. It was about the pro bono lawyer. So like her bitch ass who spent like five years trying to get me. Is now gonna have five years. Well, like it spent like she spent like two years back and forth, and now like it's gonna be three years until they're paid in full. So it was like five years worth of work to get like seventy five hundred bucks that she's gonna have to split with this kid, and uh, I think she gets thirty three percent. Right. So So, like, what is that? Twenty five hundred dollars over three years. Pre taxes over three years. Go fuck myself. That that that's why I was like, you know what? It was like uh, the mediator caught on to that immediately and was just like, yeah, fucking dude, no. So that was a good one. The shit you deal with, but you are looking. You're you mentioned you're looking at maybe bringing on an investor or something. Finally, yeah. At this point, like when you have kids, you have a wife. Um, Is your wife involved with the business? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she cool. helps. Yeah, she was a big part before we had kids, and now like she's taking on the mom role. But she's still heavily involved with like the marketing materials, the photos. Um, dude. There's just, there's just something happens, something happens, right? Like I like to listen to older people who've like been there before me mm-hmm. and they always say like, you you can always make more money. You can't get time back with your kids and like being with my kids for breakfast, being with my kids for dinner. It's just something like, I don't, I don't want to give up and like, dude, to be honest with you, man, like you lose your edge when you have kids. If you want to be there for your kids, you lose your edge. So the second your kids are born, you have to be there. While you're there, are you present? I'm never fucking present. I feel bad about it. It eats me alive. My phone is always mm. going off. There's like, and I'm like, dude, I, I want to be able to be present, you know? Like, like it's so fucking, bro, I always tell people this, right? That's good for you that you're prioritizing that. When you're a fucking man, right? In business, you can never be satisfied. As a family man, you have to be like, you can never be happy with what you have in business. You always have to be fighting for more. As a man, a family man, you always like have to be happy with what you have. You have to love your wife. You have to love your kids. And like, that's why a lot of the times, like you see like politicians or like raging businessmen, like there, there is no fucking balance in their life. There are such raging lunatics in one dimension, like more, 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 more. Yes. And that's why you see like, you see like a fucking dude like Donald Trump who's been fucking divorced a million times. You're like, you see these people who are just like, ga, 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 like more, 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 more. And mm-hmm. like, you see people getting fucking divorced left and right. So like trying to ma- balance a business and, and balance a family and be that man. <sighs> it's really fucking hard. It's very hard, man. <laughs> so like you have to be there for your kids. You have to maintain a social life. You have to fucking exercise. You have to take care of your health. It's like, and growing a company, it's just becoming... Where do you get the time in the day? I mean, you know. I mean, I hire more people to like do work for me. And then like I try to manage those metrics. But like you, I am losing my edge, dude. Like. it's You know what? That's really. Uh, that's big of, you to, a big of you to admit that too. Because I, I think what you're talking about. Most people, they won't say it out loud, but they deal with it. And some people choose to ignore it and continue about that life. And that's why they end up divorced over and over again. And yeah. the kids don't fucking like them mm-hmm. and things. But like in in my seat, one of the main things I think about in doing this the way I'm doing this now. And, I, and I've told people over the past few years when they're like, damn, like you're always in here. You're always working. Yeah. I don't leave the studio. Yeah. I'm like, I'm never going to be able to do this again. Right. Because when I have a wife and kids, yeah. if you think I'm sitting in a fucking studio for 14 hours a day yeah. and being absent, you're out of your mind. Yep. You know? And so the thing is, there's certain businesses that you can, it, it's not to say like nothing scales, like your business is scaling like crazy, but there's businesses that scale in a way that you can kind of control your day i think content creators deal with that a lot better because it's like oh we just got to make content right yeah 
But when you're doing something that involves putting a product in people's hands and you have a bunch of people working for you, for you who are responsible for actually making that product from soup to nuts and you're expanding into new territories, you're never going to – unless you find a way to kind of divest a little bit by bringing in help and taking things off your plate, you're always just going to be adding to your plate. Yeah. You know, and, and having, I mean, how old are your kids right now? My son's four. He's about to be five. My daughter's three. See, that's awesome. And so, now yeah. they're going, these are like the great years. And, and that's, yeah. that's awesome that you're thinking about that because you don't want to be the guy that's just like eat clean bro 16 hours a day. Yeah. Well, the thing is too, like this, this shouldn't feel like work for you. It didn't, it never felt like work yes. for me either. So it's like. Like I said before, like your body will tell you when you've had enough just because I like people always say like, oh, you work so hard. You earned it. You work so hard. I I never felt like I worked a fucking day, dude. Like That's I right. just fucking love it. I love what I do. I love. Um, it's just what ends up happening is like you just end up running out of time. So mm. like where do you make the time? It's not that I'm working too much. I don't feel like I've fucking like uh like there, there was a lot of times in the beginning, there was days I was tired all the time just because, I mean, you, I guess you are like physically working, but in reality, dude, you just fucking run out of time. Yeah. <laughs> That's just it's what good, happens. It's a good way of putting it. You got to just give people your time. Like I said before, like back when I, back when I was a kid, like I just gave everybody my time because I had not, what else was I going to do? Who else was I reporting to? Where was I going? I had nowhere. I was hanging out at the gym all the time. I was at the gym. I was, I was fucking at the gym day and night, bro. I'd pack my cooler. I'd fucking leave with my gallon. <laughs> and, uh, and that was it, bro. I was on my fucking gym journey. What a fucking funny time. And you scratched the itch and here you are. Yeah. That's it? Yeah, dude. Head of your dude. time, too, for sure, across the board. It's <laughs> yeah. it's it's really, really impressive what you build. I, I love hearing about all the detail that goes into it to this day i could tell that's never going to go away mm -hmm. like even when you bring people on and stuff that's going to be yeah. the process and how it has to be but where where can people where can people subscribe to get well you're working on the subscribe but where yeah. can people order on a weekly basis eat clean bro eat clean bro.com eat clean bro.com and what about what's what's the at handle on IG e clean bro e clean bro love it yeah love right it. you got I, all the real estate i got the real estate it yeah, <laughs> dude. Nobody, no. I guess nobody was crazy enough to call themselves E Clean Bro. It works. It yeah. works. It's. I'm telling you. It's some, especially living in New Jersey and seeing it everywhere. Some yeah. of the best marketing I've ever seen. Man. <laughs> great logo. Great everything. Yeah. But Jamie, I'm. I'm really glad. Really glad Chaz set this up. Yeah. So and am I. Thanks for sharing all the Jersey stories. I love yeah. that shit. <laughs> but everyone, go to ecleanbro.com. At ecleanbro on Instagram, and you're at Jamie Giovanazzo on Instagram That's as well. Right. That's right. I'll put right. that in there. Thank you, man. Say it right, everybody. Jersey out. Thanks again, brother. Everybody else, you know what it is. Give it a thought. Get back to me. Peace.